Okay, okay, okay. Welcome, 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 one and all, to yet another episode of Wick TV, a cross ideological space where we come together to talk about issues both political and cultural, from the silly to the serious. Um, just for full disclosure, I do get a paycheck for um, progressive victory. However, <laughs> they are not paying for tonight's content. Why would they? And you'll find out why would they would not in, in in a bit. We are going to be talking tonight about Donald Trump. Ever since he came down the escalator uh, way back in 2014, 2015, uh, he has fundamentally right uh, reshaped the discourse. Um, he has had a large effect on the Republican Party. And the question is, has that been a positive or a negative force? Right. Are the Republicans of today better than they were before Donald Trump or are they worse? We're going to talk about that. We're going to get into it. I've assembled a team. Thank you for being here. Thank you to my guests. Thank you to my audience. Let's get this party started. And we're going to start with Admiral Gibbs. Can Go you, ahead, please. Yeah. Yeah. It's absolutely clear to me that Donald Trump has been a boon for the Republican Party. I wasn't on board with Donald Trump originally. I wasn't my favorite guy. Wasn't my original candidate. But it is clear to me that he is an absolute boon for the Republican Party. He's been fantastic, wonderful, great. The greatest, some might say, if you, if you know. I, it's very clear to me the reason why he's the greatest is because he's shown the blatant hypocrisy and traitorous behavior that the Dems are willing to do to, to stay in power. And it's just so good to see somebody that's an outsider that really, truly loves America standing up for America against Against the evil, traitorous Democrats who want to destroy America. Okay, well, subtlety. Um, thy name is Gibbs. Thanks for being here. Really appreciate you. We'll see how we. Uh, we'll see how we do. Okay. Next up, uh, a returning guest on my show. Uh, he didn't hate it the first time, so he's back again. Hutch, please go ahead. Um. I don't know what else to say in the intro besides, you know, the question that I want to ask my conservative counterparts is, you know, a couple questions really is, number one, how are you defining success? And number two, when you look at the state of the Republican Party, uh, do you feel like it is now in better shape or worse shape than it was in 2016? To me, the answer from, I'm, I'm a little biased, but to me, when I look from the outside looking in, the answer is quite clear. But those are the two questions that I want to ask my uh, counterparts. And yeah, thanks for having me on. Oh, thanks for being here. And we will get to it in the open. Thanks for uh, next up. No stranger to my channel. Josiah, whose channel is popping off, pondering politics. Give us what you got. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I'm curious how you define success, too. But obviously, we'll get into that. By my estimation, I think Donald Trump has been um, an abject failure for both the Republican Party and the country as a whole. He won in 2016, uh, despite losing the popular vote. So he's never won a popular vote against a Democratic candidate. That may change in 2024, but who knows? Uh, he presided over defeats in 2018, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. He's being out fundraised by the Democrats and by Joe Biden. He's facing 88 uh, criminal charges. Uh, it's not good, in my opinion. I think he's bad long term for both the party and the country. Well, thank you for being here, and I'm sure we'll get into it when we get into the open. Uh, next up, again, no stranger to my show, Lauren De Laguna. Please, what do you got? Um, I think that it's a mixed bag. I think Donald Trump is good for the Republican Party in many aspects. However, due to his uh, cal cavalier attitude and how highly controversial it is, um, he had a target painted on his back. So a lot of the things that are brought up as negatives about him by Democrats or by people who are neutral in the conservative party are things such as the 88 criminal charges. But how did he gain those criminal 88 or those 88 criminal charges? Um, in my opinion, it's because um, it's because he's widely disliked. And so people are, um, prosecutors in particular are basing their runs on going after Trump and criminally prosecuting him and like the whole Russian hoax scandal. And even though it was Hillary the entire time, she uh, suck people after him to 
pursue him criminally. So it, it's really um, unfortunate because I think that he would he would have done a lot of great things for the country um, had it not been for a lot of the distractions. So, um, yeah, okay. it's a mixed bag. Well, we'll get into it uh, in the open. Lauren De Laguna coming out with It's the Clinton's Fault. Fair enough. Uh, let's get to the next guest I have. One of my new favorites, right? An up-and-comer in the scene. Rashad Crenshaw, please. Uh, I firmly believe the rise of Trump has been probably one of the worst things to happen to the Republican Party in the last decade or so. I think the damage he's done is extensive. I mean, if we look at what's going on right now with the RNC, I mean, this man literally cleaned it completely out and is basically planning to replace everyone in it with Trump loyalists. Competence be damned. Experience be damned knowledge be damned and this has been the same narrative we've heard as it pertains to washington i'm going to drain the swamp drain the swamp of expertise of knowledge of experience and replace it with people who are completely loyal to him and that's just one of many things trump has engaged in that is completely damaging the republican party so i'll get further into it as the debate goes on but yes i believe donald trump has been a massive disaster to the republican party okay thank you for being here and we'll get into it as we go and last but certainly not least uh, someone who Please. hasn't been on my show in a while, but we're glad to have him back. Rob Knorr. Go ahead. Thank you. First, uh, full disclosure, I am not paid by Progressive Victory Pack. I'm one of those weird right-wingers that don't sell out for a couple shekels, so happy to be here. Uh, yeah, it's actually, I have to agree with Hutch and Pondering both. How do you define success? Are we talking about success for Republican parties getting victory? Or are we talking about success for the good of the country? Or are we talking about success in driving the Republican party to a place that'll be better in the next generation? So there's certainly things I dislike about Donald Trump. I make criticism of him all the time. Uh, for me, my issue isn't any individual politician. It's more of a two-tier system of justice that we have in our intel agencies and unelected bureaucrats that really run the show. As Gibbs said, Trump did a phenomenal job of exposing that, but did not do a very good job of actually draining that swamp by putting people that were sycophantal around himself that didn't accomplish that. However, he was very good for the country and he's very good for exposing the uniparty and the old school Republicans. People talk about, well, Republicans are getting less victories, right? Because they're self-sabotaging because people like Mitch McConnell, and Paul Ryan hate their own constituents and they would rather lose elections and sabotage Trump and sabotage people that are considered populist because they're outsiders than they would win and lose control over their own party. So in general, I think although there are many fair critics criticisms of Trump, the country was far better off with him running it than Joe Biden. And he's actually taking the country in a direction where even if left-wingers were smart, they would understand that now is a key time for them to have potential to get sort of the old guard Democrats, the corporatist Democrats that don't give a shit about any of the lefties either. Now would be a good time to try to move that way and get those people out of control of their party as well. Okay. Thanks. Uh, thanks for, for that. And I'm sure we'll get into the thing. Okay, so like, let's talk about the success, right? Let's talk about it, and I think there's a few ways we can go about this, and there's like three different um, things I want to hit on here. I want to start, though, with for the Republican Party itself, right? Um, ha is it better under Trump? Why or why not? Go ahead. Absolutely well, not. It's not better under Trump. I mean, we've seen constant losses for the Republican Party ever since January 6th, which has been, like, been the most embarrassing moment of Trump's entire presence in politics. Republicans have been dragging their feet in the mud ever since January 6th, and I think a lot of it can be linked to uh, Trump. Even the candidates that Trump has endorsed have been struggling. The idea that the Republican Party is somehow doing a great job is false. We also look at what happened with Roe v. Wade. The overturning of Roe v. Wade landed a significant blow against people's interest in voting Republican. And that came about as a result of the Supreme Court justices that Trump put in power. So when we talk about Trump benefiting the Republican Party, we can talk about the overturning of Roe v. Wade. We can talk about what's going on right now with the RNC, where he's completely cleaning out an institution and replacing it with henchmen and cronies and goons to basically be loyal to him. Who was, no, who was the leader of the Republican Party prior to Trump that was successful for Republicans? Mitch McConnell. Bush. So because, so because they can get in. Yes, Bush. literally. Yes. It, Bush. So McConnell wasn't a presidential candidate, but we could say he was the de facto leader. That's yeah. true. But when it comes to the executive branch and leaders, every single person that Republicans have put up was more of an abysmal failure if you're just looking at a win-loss record than Donald Trump. Bush was worse. No, McLean was work. Romney Bush was work. How was Bush worse? Bush. But Trump has never be, lost. Can you let Rob clarify? Yeah, one at a time. Yeah. Rob, what, what do you mean by worse? Go ahead. 
When Bush left office in 2008, the Republican Party was in shambles. His handling of the Iraq war and the 2008 financial <laughs> crisis showed to the people of this country that he was not representative of the constituents of the GOP and made him massively unlikable and the GOP in the eyes of independents and moderates. I feel like you can make the same argument about Trump, but worse. At, 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 the, very least, George, at the very least, George W. Bush won re-election. He had the best midterm performance of any first term president in like... Hundred and fucking and Republicans years. and Republicans um, swamped in uh, President Obama's first midterms, if I remember correctly, too. Because so Obama I, sucked, I, but it, but that's generally what well, happened. Yeah, with, we well, that's that's your interpretation of the result, right? What she inherited. Yeah, yeah, but the but the result, I, I don't think it's congruent with what you said because, uh, as Hutch points out, so Bush won election, he won re-election. Uh, his Republican Party performed particularly well, especially with the, like the patriotic aftermath, or, like the surge of patriotism That's after right. 9-11. Even after Bush left office, you say the party was in shambles, but they won midterm elections during Obama's presidency, which is pretty good, right, for them. Crushed. Even if you, yeah. So I, I, I But just you could say the same of, granted, they didn't win the Senate, but they won the House midterms That's here in 2020. The well, point, the, the point I'm trying to make, I'll just, I'll be brief here. The point I'm trying to make here is usually what you see is when you had a sort of unique situation like the attacks on 9-11, there was a wave of patriotism. George Bush wasn't a good president, but that wave rode him to victory in 2004. Then when it became evident that things weren't as they seemed, it started to go downhill. You do see that when presidents are unpopular on either party, they tend to have their party lose the midterms. But I don't think that's exclusively because of Donald Trump or because George Bush was somehow better. The point I'm trying to make is the Republicans weren't doing stellar before Trump. And that's just a question of wins losses. If you get to actually representing the beliefs of their constituents, the Republicans are abysmal because they, for years, under the leadership of Boehner, Mitch McConnell, Paul Ryan, do not give a shit about the whims of their constituents. Situations. Yeah, so I won't. I won't dispute the fact that George W. Bush was a terrible yeah, president. Yeah, that was just quickly my point. No, he was fantastic president. But well, let's, just say, wait, let's just <laughs> let's just clarify what like what's good for the Republican Party because it's funny that you listed one of the negatives of Trump winning was Roe v. Wade was overturned because that made it harder to win elections. But it's what Republicans care about is having. Um, you know, our agendas met and that is something that many conservatives care about is saving the lives of children, innocent babies, um, because we're good people, unlike liberals. And so um, we are yeah, at least just... getting our agendas met under Trump in a way that we weren't getting our agendas met. What under do you need to accomplish your agenda, Lauren? What do you need to accomplish your agenda? I mean, he was very successful. Oh, hold on. He what was you, very well, successful. Hang on, I asked, I asked Lauren a question win. real quick, if you don't mind. So what do you have to do? You do need to win. So I understand okay, that's what you're right. saying. So, but and so he lost in 2018. Like a, he lost in 2020. He lost in 2021. He lost in 2022. He lost in 2023. You're the dog that caught the car with Roe v. Wade. You've lost You've lost hold abortion on. referendums in Kansas and Kentucky. Right. It's just, it's been one L after another. The Republican <laughs> alphabet is 26 L's. That's fake news. Let me tell you why. One, first of all, let me take off these shades so I can see clearly through all these lies that you're telling. Let me, let, let, Put your first fucking of all, Mando helmet on. Yeah, first of all, let, let, let him go. Let him go. Yeah. First of all, you're talking about the abortion thing like it's yeah. a law. Like, don't be mad because he, Trump was able to stack the Supreme Court with conservative justices that are going to uh, influence policy for decades. That's the biggest ass whooping the libs have taken in decades. I mean, like they got a Supreme Court that's ruling left and right in favor. They all just, no, just right, just right. It's the, just ruling right. Yeah, just right, right, exactly. right. Exactly. They yeah. just in fact, even the libs on the Supreme Court went and voted 9-0 that just recently for Donald Trump. You know, you know what we call that one from country ass whooping. That's what you just took on that one now he's going on all the all the ballots even after y'all tried to do this treasonous behavior y'all mentioned january he still, he still has to win the election well, he still has january to win the election admiral actually no i'm not even calling you hold, admiral. On, yeah, hold on hold on hold on you gotta let gibbs finish gibbs finish your thought yeah, go ahead yeah y'all mentioned january 6th earlier well you know what he was also able to stop this blm insurrection that you had popped up which is what that was that was an actual insurrection where there was Donald violence Trump stopped it yeah, they, we stopped How? it. We stopped, we stopped it. We had troops move, all sorts of stuff. We stopped crime. It was good things. You know, and then... It, you stopped yeah, crime? It, crime it, skyrocketed yeah, when Trump it, it was in office. It has skyrocketed because of liberal policies. And no, then, it's plummeted and it just, under that, Biden. It skyrocketed... Oh, Trump has shown the clear divide in America where you have minorities now wanting to vote more for Trump than ever before. The African-Americans are voting for Trump in larger numbers than ever before. We have uh, Arab-Americans. Where do they vote for Trump? Trump? 
They're wait, talking so, about so wait a minute. So, 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 Bibbs, you can't fill us. Any other conservatives? you can't fill a bus, sweetheart. Hold on, hold on. I'm not filibustering. I'm not filibustering. You got to be concise, though, Gibbs. Finish up quickly. I'm addressing all the lies they just said. I waited until everybody went. And so here's the thing. He did well in the last election with all these minorities, better than ever before. And then he exposed the treasonous behavior that the Democrats are pushing along the southern border and giving all this money to all these other countries while letting us eat shit down here in the south. I think it needs to be said that you're saying he did well in 2022 when we're talking about the worst performance for an opposition party in in uh, in, an, in an entire generation, in like 60 years. The Republicans did worse during the 2022 midterms than any other. And yet they uh, still gained seats, didn't they? They still gained seats. You yeah, let's you're, right. you're talking right. about right. Well, 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 real quick. Right. I just want to just real quick. Like when Obama faced his first set of midterms, we were still coming out of this massive economic crash that 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 uh endangered like the global economy and um that in concert with passing the aca cost him politically and he lost what, what was it like 50 seats or something like that yeah you had the republican party in 2022 that were up against the democrats who were presiding over a massive period of inflation the largest inflation that we've seen since the 80s in conventional political biden was underwater Conventional and he had low approval ratings. Yeah. Conventional political wisdom would have would tell you that the that the Republicans should have fucking slaughtered. The if I could Democrats, jump in real quick, they got like if a could, seven seat majority. They didn't. That's but not a good. And we hold on. And and I'm almost done. And we picked up a seat in the Senate. That is not a good midterm performance. That is not. Success. Yeah, that red wave was more of like a pinkish trickle. Right, and let me let me. I'll actually back you two yeah. up on that. It is disingenuous to say that the Republicans didn't massively underperform in 2022. It was based on what you're saying there, Hutch. It should have been a bigger wave. Now the question is: Is Trump to blame for that wave not being achieved, or are there other factors? But I will concede that I don't think you could spend 2022, even though they picked up the House, which they did. But you can't spend that as a victory for the GOP. You sure we can. We want. We, we I'm can't not, well, you can, but I'm not going to because you, I'm interested. In Rob, it. Even Rob, yeah. Rob's like I'm dipping. But and, and to I, be also to be fair to Rob too, in all seriousness. Well, after after Rashad, pondering, we're go after Josiah. We're going to go to Lauren, yeah. and then we'll yeah. Okay. And by the way, guys, just call me Josiah. So it, and also to throw a bone to Rob in good faith. Uh, when he says, like, how much of this can you attribute to Trump? I'm not going to say that the totality of a president's or, in, you know, a presidential candidate's success or failures are entirely attributable to them. So I think that's fair. Uh, but it happened on his watch when he was leader of the party. And many of the candidates that he endorsed uh, lost as a result of that because they were seen as too extreme, despite the favorable terrain for it. Before I throw it over to Lauren again to address some of the things that Gibbs said. So listen, uh, who was pre Gibbs? Can you remind me who was president in 2020? It was, not, it was Donald Trump. So the reason I ask that is because I, I very often run into Republicans who don't understand how time works. And so when you say that— Like Biden! That, that crime— yeah, Listen, like listen he is a, he's a sprightly 81-year-old man, okay? <laughs> Well-meaning with memory issues. Um, very good memory, but, very strong. But in 2020, Donald Trump was president, and crime skyrocketed when Donald Trump was president. Those BLM protests that you were complaining about that, that you often say, like, destroy the country, that happened on Donald Trump's the watch The insurrection, well. the island insurrection. Right, right. So right crime has plummeted in calendar year 2023. Okay. We're seeing a course that correction under Biden. So. Okay, I did want to I did want to toss it to Lauren. True. She was trying to get in uh, for a minute. Okay. I get I'm sorry about that, Lauren. Yeah, no problem. So, yeah, I, I think that there it's hard for me to spin the uh, midterm elections as a win for conservatives. I look at Carrie Lake, for instance, everyone thought she was going to win. You look at just all everyone in Arizona lost everyone who we anticipated. But then again, I think there's other factors that aren't you too friendly that are more rumble friendly to say that are not Donald Trump related other than people hating Donald Trump so much that they're willing to do things in order to have elections not go his way if you get what i'm saying i just do not oh my god so I, it's hard to example in, of what I'm exactly thank you this for is a prime you. example of what i'm talking about yeah but you gotta this be careful in mean, the democracy yes. of this nation this man has poisoned okay. the minds of his followers it's crazy i like the money on my channel it, so. it's not poison. It, the fact that, that you look at the bellwether election but it doesn't matter i'm gonna skip past that because i can't even talk about that without i would let this. you again what are you talking but about? I, I can't get as There's the a risk that he'll be demonetized. That's what oh, yeah. I think it's yeah, so yeah. funny. People actively worked against Donald Trump. So, for instance, even as Donald Trump tried to be tougher on crime in some aspects during 
you pointed out skyrocketing crime in 2020 when COVID happened, when um, defund the police happened. These were all liberal policies. It's seen, and also prosecutors that were in liberal cities. I it was as if they were actively working against the Trump administration. And, and there's so many cases of this. There's so many DAs. You, you guys um, don't get to blame just, Biden who for. Did not prosecute. Who just refused, like, for the instance, police wasn't Trump was police said, defunded, Lauren, in calendar year 2020. No. So it's I don't not know just the about. defunding of the police. It's also were defunded. there was like isn't actual, Joe Biden the same uh, presidential police? candidate that at one point let, like, got, what about the let, let her finish. Let her get through her instance, spiel, and then the you can Suffolk, respond. I promise. The Suffolk County District Attorney had a list of ten crimes that she legitimate Rachel Rollins. She legitimately just refused to prosecute, and there were other. And then there was uh, Bodine in San Francisco, and then there was the uh, uh, Garcon in L.A. There were prosecutors all over America who are actively just promoting the increase of crime. And then you're just going to spin that and turn it around on Trump. Now, there was things that Trump did that I think that uh, somewhat encouraged crime. I, like, for instance, I think what was the first step act or something it, where he, he released a lot of prisoners um, on the basis that they wouldn't uh, recommit if they took a first step in um Fixing whatever it was that their issue was and they were like non I, so there was some soft on crime in some policies but in many other areas he was exceedingly tough on crime for instance the border wanting to build a wall and what do we have we have so many people coming into this country committing crimes and crimes against each other which a lot of them are then not even reporting and then also the biden administration do you think they're reporting crimes against each other like crimes they are housing illegal aliens. Do you think those illegal aliens okay, are so able I'm, to Okay, so I'm bringing this back to actually what we're talking about. So number one, I didn't blame Trump for the rise in crime. I was correcting Gibbs about a fact that on Donald Trump, under his watch, under his administration, crime skyrocketed. Now, you can say that there's no causal relationship there need to make that it case, but true. it is a fact it's that it skyrocketed in 2020. That's not true. That's Let me it. ask you this. Was, so, uh, so, for example, if we look at violent crime in 2018, we had 1,390,000 and change. 2009, 1,333,000. Uh, and then when we get to 2016, when Trump came into office that year, we had 1,259,000. Trump's first year, we had a precipitous drop to 1,230,000. The next year, another precipitous drop, 1,221,000. The next year, an even more substantial drop to 1.19 million. Then we do have an uptick in 2020 to 1.269. The it following the two years, the first two years under Biden, there's a slight drop to 1.25 and then a drop to 1.23. Both of those numbers are higher than Trump's two, first two to, uh, years in term. What happened in 2020 that made it different? Well, even though police may not have technically being defunded we had multiple things that were going on we had COVID. And please let me finish we had COVID. then we had actually left-wing people that were saying over and over that police should be defunded which was causing the dissuasion of police forces actually trying to interrupt crime because they were on constant fear that they would become the next they would become the next person that would be you know broadcast on national tv and lose their life the democrats ran on defunding the police and the police are evil which no they did not please Absolutely. let me finish no they did not notice I'm quiet when everyone else is talking, which led to them then having predictable results in these cities where violent crime spoke because spiked because they told their police not to interact with those people. And then the left wingers that were rioting and committing all this violent crime magically stopped once Biden got into office. All of a sudden, then it wasn't mostly peaceful riots and things like that. In places like Seattle, where they went to the governor's mansion, they actually sent the feds in to stop them. We now have, we're mm. being told that violent, and by the way, I'm with you, Lauren, I don't trust the damn statistics. Anyways, we're being told simultaneously by the state of New York, Mayor Adams is saying violent crime's going down, everything's good, and yet they're deploying the National Guard to subways for people that are violating turnstiles, and the very people that told us it would be an act of fascism for Donald Trump to deploy the National Guard to start violent left-wing rioters that were using firebombs to try to kill people and break into the White House, which I'll bet not a fucking one of you spoke up against. You were okay with that insurrection, weren't you? But when Donald Trump and Tom Cotton and an op-ed in the New York Times saying we should deploy the National Guard to stop these violent people. All of a sudden, the writers at the New York Times said, we're going to quit. You can't do that. They had to remove the op-ed. The entire Democrat narrative was, how dare you in an act of fascism deploy the National Guard? Now, 
Biden makes it a staple to have the National Guard out in front of Washington. Now we have the National Guard. But at the same time, you're spending the message to us, but trust is violent crimes down. It's absolute bullshit. And anyone who lives it in is. one of these cities, so, anybody, okay, so listen, any, yeah, anybody so can I, pull up FBI you, crime statistics. Anybody can just Google it right now. I just stick her away from the base. He just literally FBI statistics are known for being. Right. 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 Like, like, so they, so the yeah. point is, they don't touch, they don't trust the statistics, but it doesn't matter because in that well, street, Rob statistics. admitted that crime did have an uptick in 2020, which is the only thing I disputed. I don't know why we spent so much time no, on you, that. You all yeah. said that there was an uptick under Trump, implying that over his no, term, there was an uptick, but there was far less okay. on average year, far less violent crime during Trump than there will probably end up being under Biden. And so certainly under Obama, Bush and The reason that we Bush said that crime spiked under Trump was because Trump was president in 2020, which is contrary to what Gibbs' claim was. So now we spent 15 minutes on a single, minor, well, completely uncontroversial right. point, right. which Thank is that you. in 2020, crime spiked under Trump. That's it. That's the only thing I said. It should have been like, yeah, well, you can see this. Well, you can see this real quick. It looks like the average of the four years under Trump. So far, the statistics we have, it looks close or that Biden's average crimes will be slightly higher than those of Trump. I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure overall, I am sure overall Thank they you. are comparable. Yeah. Not back to the topic, though. Back to the topic. Why has it been good for Republicans? Ask any any Republican or any Democrat. If you go out and just ask the average Joe how their groceries are looking, how their uh, gas prices are looking, and people go, oh, Biden economics. Oh, we got so many more jobs. Well, sure, you got more jobs after y'all shut down the whole country, took everybody's right. jobs, and got more. The economy's doing way worse by every statistic. Like, we can go not by. Not by every statistic. Every, See, this is the thing. You're conflating, every, you're conflating no, 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 public no, no, no. perception. Every, no, no, you're conflating Public stat, perception on stat, the economy with the macroeconomic is, data. Every, every, every stat is worse. And then the one stats what that about, are good oh, is you say, every stat is, oh, you say every stat is worse. What about rate of inflation? Stat, well, hold on. Oh, hold, hold on. on. Hold rate of, it's higher. It's higher than Trump. What about rate of inflation? Hold on. Hold on. What did, hold on. Hold on. Both of you. Both of you stop. Both of you stop. Oh, my God. I can't hear a word either one of you are saying. So... Probably Please, one at a time. Yeah, so Gibbs, so, finish, and then we're going to go to Hutch to respond. Sure, Please, I'll be quick. I'll be quick here. So it's really simple. The only ones that they keep pointing to is rate of inflation, which is still lower under Trump. And then we want to talk about uh, job gain, which whenever people are working three jobs because the Dems shut down thousands of small businesses nationwide, mm -hmm. cost people their livelihoods, and then they go, oh, wow, now you work three jobs working for DoorDash, Amazon, and another company just to make ends meet. It's pretty clear to the average person the, the economy's in the dog shit, right? Now, all the prices of goods are way higher now than they were before, and it's just simple. People are tired of paying so much, so it's been a boon for the Republican Party because you can compare results. Except it hasn't been a boon for the Republican yeah. Party because they've still lost elections. They've still lost elections in 2023, okay. in 2022, in 2021. Even when Biden has been president, Republicans have not had meaningful gains. So this idea that it's a boon for the Republican Party, it may be, it may be in 2024, you may be correct because that election hasn't happened yet. But in terms of what elections have happened, you've been wrong time and time again. I think it's funny are, because are, when we're talking about, I, go ahead, I'll, I'll, I'll step back, I'll leave you go, Hutch. Oh, well, I just want to say like, are we all seriously trying to make the case that presidents are responsible for things like crime? Right. Do you guys, do we really or in, or, in, or, in, 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 or in the case of Gibbs or in the case of Gibbs inflation somehow Biden questions. is responsible Biden is responsible for the inflation it's funny you say that because when we talk about inflation one of the I biggest find. factors in inflation is the war in Ukraine which your boy Trump has been really really soft on you want to talk about the cost of groceries and fuel that war has impacted that but the prices of both of those things and Trump has been playing softball for quite some time in fact uh Orban just left Trump's crib about a few days ago he said, um, Trump will not be sending a single dollar to Ukraine. So as Putin is causing more economic strife globally and in Europe, thanks to his war in Ukraine, your boy Trump, according to Orban, is saying, I'm not going to give these people another dime. So it's funny you say that when we're going to be looking at an even an even stronger amount of inflation and global upheaval with Trump being in office if he gets in. So what do you say to that? Well, well I will say something that. He shut down multiple pipelines. That cost oil and natural gas to shoot up. What so happened? Like, blaming him for this. So, so, and then oh, he probably, so we're, we're supposed to continue funding the war, the, 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 the war treasury of, of Russia. We're supposed to continue to just put money all, in their pocket. Are, the pipelines in our, like, on, on the United States. The pipelines in your country. That doesn't make any sense, bro. You just you're, don't even oh, you're talking about the pipelines about. here. I thought you were talking about Nord Stream pipeline. Oh, the okay. one that the CIA allegedly blew up? I, I mean, like... <laughs> I want to pass the ball. Hold on, I want to pass the ball to, to Rob. I want to pass the ball to Rob. Hold on. I want to pass the ball to Rob, then we're going to go, go to Lauren, and then we'll uh, continue the discussion. I'll be right um, back, but I'm listening. 
Yeah, we, we know from listening to Rashad, the people that would have supported the Iraq war. I always find these ghoulish takes. You're comparing Ukraine to Iraq. Are you serious right now? Yes, I am. Okay, you got, you got let him, hold on, hold on, stop. You got to let him, you got to let him go for more than two seconds before we, we get into it. Please. Rob, the okay. idea that we have to put the Ukrainian people through a meat grinder by sending them just enough weapons that hundreds of thousands of them could die over and over so we could feel more comfortably economically here is a fucking joke. Yes, it's absolutely a joke. And the reason that we're in this play, in this situation in the first place is because people played with fire. Even though I hate Putin and I hope Ukraine wins tomorrow, the truth is the United States and NATO continued to aggress knowing that there was a chance that this would upset Russia and it's had predictable results, including us interfering in the elections in 2014 to replacing someone that was a president of Ukraine that was pro-Putin was considered favorable to him, and then all of a sudden installing someone who was pro-Obama, which took one of their neighboring states and actually made them one of the most antagonistic towards Russia. In addition to that, NATO had moved nuclear weapons in 2009 to Turkey, roughly about 200 miles off the border of Russia. We also found out from a New York Times article that since 2014, we've actually had the CIA operating at least 20 bases in Ukraine, militaristically training them. So all of these things, even though I don't feel that Putin was justified, is an example of the very institutions that were out to get Trump escalating the tensions in these situations and then you blame Trump and say well it's Trump's fault because he doesn't want to fuel these terrible policies. In addition there's a couple other things to say. I'm sorry I'm speaking rapidly but there's a lot of people talking a lot of points. I find it hilarious when all of a sudden people want to pick and choose what they blame presidents for. For example we heard the fact that crime was brought up I believe unless I'm wrong was brought up by Pondering First that talked about crime rates being down implying that we were when we're having a conversation about presidents somehow providing the implications that that somehow meant that Biden or Trump were responsible for those rates. The reason that Trump probably lost the election in addition to all of the institutions colluding against him, including engaging in a coup using the FBI to wage war against him and spying on him. But the reason Trump lost the election was COVID mm -hmm. because people like you, I guarantee fucking tea, blame Trump for COVID when we could see when the Democrats came in, they didn't have any better plan. In fact, all they did was rely on the very vaccines that they said not to trust when Trump was trying to push the vaccines. More people died under the same time frame despite the fact that the tool they used to fight COVID was already created under Donald Trump. But because Trump got blamed for COVID, that's largely what cost on the election. I will guarantee MT, if I was on a panel with all of you in 2020, you wouldn't have been saying, how dare people blame Trump for COVID? It's an act of God. Clearly, it's not his fault. So look at look at all the other things around him. Because if we look at the economic data, the foreign policy data, and all of these other things, even people that didn't like Trump's personality, which there's a lot to dislike about him, actually incredibly enjoyed the country the way it was under Trump. Compare that to how we are under Biden on the cusp of World War III, a border that's collapsing, fentanyl deaths through the roof, corruption out the wazoo, and the inflation going to the point where average people can't afford their rent or buy groceries anymore. And it's clear to see that the reason that all these losses are occurring is because Trump is seen as someone who's anti-institutional, and all of these institutions have colluded to make sure that we go back to the same uniparty. Okay. Okay. So I mean, three, we got to let people respond place. to that. We're gonna we're gonna yeah. pass it. Hold on. So we're just, gonna pass yeah, it no, to, no, so yeah, so. to pondering. Then we're gonna pass it to um, yeah. Rashad, and then we're gonna go to yeah. Um, so real quick, number one, um, I also want to say that I, too, work with the Progressive Victory. It shouldn't be a spoiler because I talk about it on my channel. But just in case those of you don't know, I work with Progressive Victory. Canvas with them. Had a great time, number one. Number two, I wasn't the one, from what I remember, who mentioned crime rate. It was in response to Gibbs saying that under Trump, crime dropped. I was actually saying— Right. So I was responding to that. Which Number three, in terms of blaming for in terms of blaming Trump for covid, I don't blame him for covid, but I do, do take issue with his response to covid because he was the chief executive. And I think he had an obligation to rally the country together, to use the bully pulpit, to unite Republican governors and politicians to take the virus seriously. Uh, yeah. And I do think that his how would that have helped anything? I think What's that, that look like. OK, so how about so, you know, how you were talking and I didn't interrupt you. So show me the same courtesy, sure. please, especially since we're buddies. So number. So the other thing is the. Uh, uh, God damn it, Rob. God damn it. This is what. Shut the fuck up. The, um, what was I saying? You can get Unite the bully you pulpit. Said the you boy. were saying he could have used the bully pulpit to bring yeah, Republican yeah. Uh, governors so, together. Right. So, so when facing a crisis like COVID, what um, what Trump should have done was what George W. Bush did in the aftermath of 9-11, uh, what FDR did uh, during the, the Second World War is try to use it as a unifying thing to unite the country. Democrats were willing to work with him uh, with respect to COVID management. They helped pass his two COVID stimulus bills, uh, even though it was an election year and he was going to get the credit for it. So clearly there was a spirit of bipartisanship from the Democrats. Trump didn't do that in terms of Biden's COVID response. He did have a plan because Trump's plan was to give it to the States, 
Uh, Biden actually created a federal program for vaccination rollout. The rates of vaccinations increased on, under his watch meaningfully from Trump's. He put a vaccination and testing site within five miles of 90 percent of the American people. And in terms of people dying at higher rates, that's because under Trump, the virus spread, number one, and the people who were disproportionately being infected and dying were Trump supporters in red states and red counties. So that's on Trump. That's not on Biden. Uh, and as far as the general vaccinated, wait a minute. And as far as did I lose something? Did my camera freeze? No, no you're, you're good. good. No, okay. you're fine. Go, the, please. The mon the, one of the monitors kicked off. I'm sorry. And then the last thing I'll say is that in, in terms of um, what we blame or credit uh, a president for, um, I agree that you can't pick and choose. You can't blame uh, Biden for everything or Trump for everything. That's why I say we can't be too reductive. The president's the most powerful and influential person on earth, but I think it wouldn't be fair to blame Trump single-handedly for crime or Biden for inflation or anything like that. So I do agree there, but we're gonna, probably gonna be using the stuff interchangeably just to be reductive to move the conversation along. Can but I, I agree ask a quick you. question, just sure. while, while you're still thinking on this. Prior to COVID, so Trump's country regardless of how much you know praise or blame you're giving to Trump 2019 United States is that better than 2024 United States in what way in like most ways overall economically border security foreign policy wars around the world fentanyl overdoses take your pick overarchingly was the country in a better place in 2019 prior to covid under donald trump than it is in 2024 under joe biden i would say in certain ways sure i would say that there were fewer overall border contacts I, no I, I don't i'd have to like aggregate them and consider it because also one of the differences too um is, is again since we're talking credit and blame uh, i'm not saying that you're doing this rob but do you, okay let me ask you this you, you talk about how we shouldn't blame or credit presidents you shouldn't pick and choose. Did time begin when Donald Trump was inaugurated in January 2017? No, and I don't so, think you heard so, me say— No, 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 no I know. I know well, about picking and choosing. Well I, well, I know you said we you shouldn't pick and choose. I want to make sure what you're in, doing. So and I want to make sure that you're not doing that. So when you talk about the good things that happened under Trump— he didn't create all of that single-handedly, right? So he inherited things from Obama, good and bad, I'm assuming you would say, like the economy. You wouldn't give him full credit for the economy, even if you thought the economy was great on his watch, right? If I could respond, if you give me 30 yes. seconds to respond. 30 seconds, so but then just real quick, we do need and to get I, other and people in. I won't in. respond that's to his fine. response. I that, won't respond to his fine. response. He gets the, get the, reason I asked you, the reason I asked you the question of if we're not assigning any blame and we're just looking objectively at the year 2019 versus 2024, which year was better, anyone that's being objective can see things were better in 2019 prior to COVID. Then we <laughs> could have a discussion about how much each president is responsible. But you're unwilling to even give that admission that things were better under 2019. The point I'm trying to make is you could try to say that presidents are responsible for certain things. But what I'm saying is, while Trump was there, things were better. The country was going in a better direction. And so when people want to pick and choose the negatives of Trump, which they did, which cost Trump the election, and then say we shouldn't blame Trump or his party, which you all have been bragging about, they should have had a crushing wave against them, but they didn't. And they're still there and still control the majority of the party or the power. And we see how bad things are going. Who else will we blame if not Democrats? I mean, in addition to that, Republicans are very happy overall with like Repu with uh, Trump's like foreign policy statements, right? You like, you know, it people are sitting be. here. You know, well, we should be, and I'll tell you why. It's real hard for a Republican to sit here and stomach things like, oh, we're going to give sixty billion to Ukraine, whenever, and then nothing to the uh, the border, whenever, like, oh, we give a poison pill border bill that, and while we let these people stream in, we're going to give three hundred million over to the Haiti, which is a, a situation that Biden uh, uh, enabled and allowed cannibals to take over the country, and then we're going to sit here and allow things like, uh, oh, we're going to allow Israel Palestine go to all shit. We're going to have the disastrous uh, fiasco in Afghanistan. Stand. Like Biden's foreign policy is just total dog shit, right? And 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 Trump is sent here and called out and said, "Hey, NATO, y'all need to carry y'all's fair, fair share." Hey. Ukraine, why are we sending money over there when we need to fix the border? You know, like, he's just said America first, and the Republicans are very much behind these things, which has unified the Republican Party Whoa, in a gotta, certain gotta, aspect gotta, in regards okay. to... Yeah, we gotta let other people in. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Let's go to, oh my God. Let's go to Rashad, like, then Hutch. Up. That's the order we're gonna go in. Rashad, Hutch, then Laura. Can I just say one thing? No, hold on, shut up. Really hold, I'm speaking, I'm speaking. 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 I'
Uh, it is Women's it's History it's Month. It is Women's History you know, Month. I'm sorry. Like, we got to go to Lauren. It's related to, I've been waiting a minute. I just want to say this one thing really quick. So I just wanted to double check some of the facts that were previous led. So top five states of people who died of Rhode Island by population, or sorry, of coronavirus by population, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, New York, why would you do Vermont, population and per then we have Alaska, why would you do, why would you do, why would you do total population instead of per capita? District of yeah, this is per capita. Oh, you said this total population. Capita. Sorry. Rhode Go ahead. All right. per, this is per, per 1 million population. So you do it, but it's per capita. Rhode Island, Massachusetts, New York, Vermont, then Alaska, California, Connecticut, Illinois, Maine, District of Columbia. Top, those were the top 10. This is so you're just so like, yeah. I'm sure you scribbled a list together on your word pad, but it's actually wait, 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 Oklahoma, wait, 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 Alabama, wait, 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 Texas, exactly. West Virginia, yes, Mississippi, yes. Wyoming, wait. Tennessee. Where are you getting this list? When I look, she up wrote right it. Now, she put yeah, she like, pulled up a Microsoft Word others? document, typed it out. She Hello? went to r slash no, Donald like, on Reddit. Let me tell you. Let me tell me because you're afraid. Are you afraid for me to tell you the facts? No, because you're wrong. Go ahead. Go ahead. You are wrong. You are wrong. slash coronavirus forward slash country forward slash us and then i did it by um then i sorted by t uh, t uh by deaths by one million population i'm getting completely so different numbers uh it just you are, you are so not i'm going to the coronavirus counter from oh, the wait. beginning i have i have consistently used the same website so that you no one could uh, say that i'm picking i've been consistently using worldometers i'll, I'll put it in the chat how do i put it, forward do I put slash it in the chat coronavirus forward slash country forward okay. slash us it's a it's a reputable site Stop rhode Mega. island massachusetts okay. new york vermont alaska california connecticut illinois main district of columbia okay i mean so just, you're say just gonna spew a bunch of nonsense facts and you can't back them up. It was like a it was like a list of facts, and this is one that I knew. Okay, I could for sure pull that one. Okay, up. now so that we're done with that. Okay. Now okay. that we're done with that. <laughs> now that we're done. Oh my God! Now that we're done with that. Can you we're post the that. link? Because the link I'm looking at says something completely yeah, where, different. Can, so can you just post DM that? me the link, and I'll DM yeah, it to everyone. So go ahead. Post it in the okay, group I'll chat. Be, post it in the group I'll chat. I'll DM so you the. Gives, I'll DM you the right link here. Sorry. To Gibbs and Rob, this populist bullshit of somehow or another trying to blame NATO and the United States DOD for what we did in Ukraine, trying to push back against Putin's influence. You said, you know, I'm not defending what Putin did, but I'm gonna list a bunch of things that our nation did to better our interests in Ukraine and make that a reason for why Trump's foreign policy is somehow better or say that somehow we triggered what's going on in Ukraine. Frankly, I'm honestly kind of glad that Putin did what he did because now we're able to completely drain him economically militarily we get to turn russia if they weren't even already a paper tiger we get to turn it into an even more of a paper tiger i'm actually glad things went the way that they did because honestly i'm tired of a nation that's as delusional as belligerent and as crazy as russia having the gall or perceiving themselves to have the power to invade another nation that's actually beneficial for the united states for russia to no longer be a geopolitical player and it's crazy to me how somehow you would compare Ukraine to Iraq when Iraq was cowboy foreign policy and Ukraine is actually the defense of an independent democratic nation that is actually favorable toward the West, is friendly to NATO. It blows my mind that after Trump meets with someone who tried to block Sweden and Finland from joining NATO, we're still playing the game that Trump somehow had better foreign policy toward Ukraine in the last year or two, or at least ideas toward it, and Biden's been worse, when in reality, Trump has been enabling our enemies, has has been disparaging our allies what are we even like talking about when we sit here and applaud trump's perception of ukraine in all of the horrible takes i've heard on ukraine i have to give you credit for having the exact worst take hey, and man. the most disgusting no, i have the best please, take. Hey, let man. me finish the most disgusting fucking comment i've heard i don't know if you all listen to that spiel carefully but let me tell you what he just said the actions that i outlined of nato aggression were quote Good for us. Fuck the people of Ukraine. They were good for us. That's what he's concerned with. Oh, then the people of Ukraine want to be please, please. Then he follows it up. Please. Then he follows it up with. He follows that up with. I'm glad that Amen. Russia invaded. That's what he follows it up. Now this is yeah. what's true of so many yeah. of these people. They don't yeah. give a shit about the people, people of Ukraine. Oh, I don't. Please. 
Shut your mouth. You've already exhibited your callousness and your stupidity. Don't make a bigger fool of yourself. Now you're the biggest fool of this there. panel, both physically I, and mentally. Okay, I well, disagree. Okay, so, okay, okay. One at a time. One at a time. Let him finish, then I'll let you respond. Then we got to go to Hutch. That's the order we're gonna yeah. go in. Go ahead. The idea yeah. is that these people recommend these things because they know it'll never affect them. The people that will suffer the most by not pushing for a peaceful resolution are actually the people on the ground of Ukraine. They're the people that will be buying in droves, and eventually it'll end up the same way that Libya ended up, the same way that Afghanistan levied up, that these military industrial complex people, the same people that are putting Ukrainian flags, the politicians that their oh defense contractors God. are getting millions and billions of dollars oh in contracts, God. eventually shut your fucking mouth, you fucking idiot. Have you some live in a world where because fucking military God. defense contractors make money off of war, <laughs> war is automatically a bad thing. You, you are a child. child. This is me. You, you are a child. child. Okay. You are okay. A okay. okay, enough, enough, enough. enough. You are Enough. A I will mute boy. you both. I'll mute you. you. I'll mute you. Okay, gang, we must have order in this house mm -hmm. so people can understand what's going on. Okay. We get some decorum. Rob, yes, Rob's going to finish, and then you can respond, and then we're going to go to Hutch. Cool? Cool. Go to Rob. I can handle people with bad takes, but saying that you're actually happy that this invasion occurred illustrates the callousness of the point that there are so many people that are willing to sit as armchair quarterbacks and say, yes, yes, keep the war going. It helps us. It exposes well, Russia. It, please shut the fuck up. You are so worthless. The least you I'm can do is. For the, the I'm waiting point. for the tears. Okay, I'm going to have to. Eyes. Okay, I'm going to have to mute one of you at a time. I. What is this nonsense? Rob, finish. I, you will get a response, Rashad. You will get a response. I promise you. But you got to let Rob finish. And then I'm going to mute Rob so you can finish because that's what I have to do. Okay, Rob, please go ahead. So the point I'm trying to make before rudely interrupted for the umpteenth time is that these people are callous and they don't give a shit because they see some sort of personal benefit for their side or their 401k or their gas prices or whatever. And so when you let them talk, they expose themselves by saying things like the actions we took that helped aggress was good for us. And I'm glad that Putin invaded. That's the truth of it. So when these people wax on about their moral superiority and having to stand up to Putin, remember, they don't give a shit about the people of Ukraine. They're more than happy to see more and more of them die so they could get on their bully pulpit and try to shame you into pissing more money away in foreign wars around the world while the people in this country suffer. Okay, we good? I'm going to I'm going to unleash Rashad Amen. here and he's going to go and Rob if you, if, you, if you response, if you respond, if you interrupt them, I will mute you. Rashad finish and then we're going to go to hutch next that's oh. oh my god that's what we're going to can do. i go after lauren though or, yes or you after can go. hutch or yes you next can go after, after hutch go thank you i would argue rob that people like you are not so different from people like me and this is the reason why i'll say this People like you want to kick the war down. You want to kick the can down the road. You seem to think that a peace deal with Putin will stay exactly as it is. We've already seen Russia break the agreement before. They already had an agreement to take Ukraine's nuclear weapons and said, you know what? We will not violate these people's sovereignty after this. They promised and they broke that promise. After Crimea, they took Crimea. They came back again. The reality is people like you, for the benefit of your economy, for the benefit of you, for the benefit of not having World War III break out, you're just as happy to kick the can down the the road and subject the Ukrainian people to another invasion. The difference is I have the balls to say, hey, the war happening now and us confronting this now and ending this now is more beneficial for the United States, our allies, and Ukraine than kicking the can down the road and Donald Trump getting in front of a camera and said, I ended the war, I'm amazing. That right there is meaningless. And I would implore you, and I know you're not dumb, I would plead with people like you on your side to look at things from a different perspective. You are kicking the can down the road. Russia has already proven we don't give a fuck about your word, our word. We will continue to expand. Medvedev continuously threatens to blow up the United States and NATO over and over and over again. We have been shown time and time again Russia has to be stopped and they have finally put themselves in a position to be stopped. That is what I'm happy about, frankly, and I'm not scared to say that. So, with that being said, you sit in there saying that, you know, defense contractors making all this money, military industrial complex, over the course of history, defense contractors have always made money off of war. Boeing made money off of war. Uh, Lockheed made money off of war in World War II. So many companies we know and love. What about Glock? What about uh, Smith & Wesson? What about uh, 
Heckler & Co. These are companies that conservatives love to death. Why won't you demonize those defense contracting companies that make money off of war right now? The point of the matter is, is populist foreign policy is wrong and it's going to cause a World War III scenario and it benefits all of us to stop it now. That's all I have to say. Okay. Hutch, please. I don't want to circle. We, we could circle back and forth forever on this, but I want to... Okay. okay. Here, here, here's what I want to say. Okay. So, so us three, we got into like a little private discord and we, we had a conversation about like, what do we anticipate we're going to be up against? All of this is entirely predictable. Uh, the, the, we, you know, I, I, I remember saying like, they're not going to want to engage on the actual topic. Do you guys remember the actual topic? The actual topic the is, actual topic. is Donald Trump good for the Republican party? Has he been a good force for the Republican party or has he hurt the Republican party? There is no way that on the merits you could make the case that Donald Trump has been good for the party if we're using the metric of like electoral outcomes. He has been an unmitigated disaster for the party. And so what do you do instead? You want to litigate like the Ukraine no. war? You want to talk about Hillary Clinton? Quite frankly, I'm fucking flabbergasted that you haven't mentioned Hunter Biden by now. I, I'm I'm utterly shocked. No, that's fake that news. That's come up. That's Can we see the conversation? Can we steer the conversation back to the topic at hand? Has Donald Trump been good for the party? If so, how could you possibly make that case? If Bernie Sanders had won in 2016 and then my party would have gone along this like similar trajectory of like piss poor midterm performances, first midterm president since George H.W. Bush, special special election defeat after special election defeat after it's flipping House legislatures, uh, fl uh, flipping gubernatorial seats, flipping uh, state Supreme Courts. I would be furious with my party. I would be furious with Bernie Sanders and I would want him to get the fuck out of the way and let somebody else come in i don't know how you guys are can you make your case on the topic at hand well, i want yeah, to say sorry, real quick wait 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 wait, 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 wait. Gibbs, 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 with respect which said i could go after that i promise i'll, I'll go quick. after you then I'll just yeah i'll just be super quick so the reason i was quiet this whole time is because i was going through lauren's link trying to figure out how the fuck she came up with that list and she misread don't it don't embarrass yourself right now don't so, embarrass read what I, I i'm not i'm not so if you go back to that list to and you sort it the reason she gets rhode island massachusetts new york vermont alaska is tests per That's one million population call. not deaths or cases that's why mm -hmm. even rob says you had the wrong fucking numbers so i agree we should not report false facts but that's why I'm a liberal and you're not, because the facts tend to be on my side and not yours. Now that Damn. we've established that, now I'm tossing it back to Hutch and Gibbs. Yes, so first of all, what Hutch did is extremely disingenuous, and that is a liberal tactic, and he wants to ignore what I said, which was I started, and I said, the Republican Party has been unified under Donald Trump that. due to the foreign policy, part of the partially, right? And I brought that up, and then he tried to dismiss everything I said because he didn't like the facts, which is what I brought up, and he wanted to just slide that on over and yeah. say that Republicans don't have that, and he wants to say, oh, this is not the issue at hand, which is bullshit and very disingenuous, and I'm very disappointed in you for doing that. Between you and me. The difference between you and me. I spoke up and said something on the topic, or you wanted to just uh, avoid talking about the issue at hand, which I brought up that Trump said, hey, we're mm -hmm. sick of these foreign policy issues. We want mm -hmm. to send in the money at home. We're sick of sending our money and our children to foreign wars to die, and we're sick of sending wars That's money to Ukraine, and spreading this thing out, and like fighting a paper tiger war for Ukraine, and sending people over there, because people are dying. And like when I said, Trump said, hey, let's stop all that, and let's spend the money at home, and Republicans are uniting okay. and you said okay. right. oh right. well that's not true that's okay. just we're okay. just gonna ignore that fact sure 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 okay so one th first things first the difference between you and me is that I don't evaluate success when it comes to the difference between you and me is that I don't evaluate success for my party based on uniformity. That is not a coherent metric to consider when we're talking about success. I look at election results and I'm very happy with where my party's at right now. But I want to touch on something you just said. You seem to live in, alt in an alternative reality where Donald Trump like 
stopped all of our defense spending abroad and then what started investing heavily into social spending programs what, do you you're, think saying, you're, saying, now? you're saying that donald trump like w w really we stopped dropping bombs in in like other regions we stopped Absolutely participating not. in wars did we no. did we pass some sort of like a massive welfare state expansion that i'm just unfamiliar with like where no, what do, he, can you explain i, I will i will explain uh, okay. donald trump crushed isis north korea was no longer a threat we had we opened it up under biden for example we've had north korea be more threat they've stuck for the first time in what 60 70 years said they no longer see south korea as a part of them anymore and are willing to go to war like we're the closest to world war three we've ever been ever been we got you the ukraine said, russia going and trump, hold on. trump has sat here and said hey a lot of this stuff is sick we need to spend the money at home that's been a policy point he's been talking about for years now what are he you talking about I'm asking you, that right. I'm asking i'm asking you and to Biden expand on that ball. hold on explain yourself you said i, I mean i am explaining he, that you said that he wants to spend more of that money at home instead of abroad what I mean, are you, you talking about? I, I am. I'm, I'm telling you the facts, bro. I don't like. What, he literally what, crushed what ISIS. He, he brought people out of all these other okay. countries. He He's started no. the Afghan draw. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We're, we're missing each question. other. We're missing each other. Okay. So what Hutch is asking, and he correct correct me if I'm wrong, but what he's asking is when you say he wants to spend the money at home, in your opinion, Gibbs, right? In to in your point of view, what specifically at home Let is Trump? advocating for spending money on legislation I mean, like let's, let's start legislation policies, with a policies. policy yeah i mean well, okay border let's talk about border number one that's according to msnbc and fox news the border is now 71 percent of the voters are talking about fucking voting on the border right that's what that's like both a liberal and the conservatives are talking about here's a policy what, he's what are you, and he's saying we need to spend money on the border right now he secured the border under trump he spent money at home building a wall that biden has used the national guard to tear down parts of like that is a policy are you saying the border policy Man, is not a when you say border? when you say something like when you say something like like oh he he stopped doing all this shit in abroad which he didn't do by the way he, he escalated he, he escalated our drone program he didn't wow. pull out of iraq he didn't it pull broke. out of afghanistan so he like, started when, out. when you when you say stuff like oh well you know he was spending that money at home what i think of is like oh were you talking about like expanding health care subsidies are you talking about like expanding that's, that's unemployment policy. subsidies are you talking about like, uh, like expanded welfare programs like that's what also are you a liberal about? Well, well hopefully he's cutting those but you know that's a whole different Rob, you want next or yeah, yeah, yeah. I, don't I mean, worry. Well, I'm talking uh, about a tangible policy, and the border is one of them, and that's well, the one issue people are talking about voting on the most. And he sat here and he he spent money on that. He pulled us out of Afghanistan, started to, which like I said, Biden dropped the ball. He was working with North Korea to stop all the bullshit over there, and now that country's in a crazier position than ever. Like I don't know how you can even argue that Biden's foreign policy hasn't been an utter and abysmal failure. And there's a reason why Trump people are sitting here going, "Hey, stupid, let's stop sending our money." everywhere else and spend some money at okay. home and why are trump people just, talking to other trump people before we go on before we go on i'm gonna put a pin on this because i need to make money and i said at the top of the hour i'll read my super chats let me go through that and then we'll get to it and we'll go to um, can i go after rob by the way yeah, when we'll you're go done to rob then we'll okay. go to Zaya, and then we'll go uh, again, rashad just, i think he said first so i'll go after rashad sure okay uh i'll get through these quick as i can go after that yes two dollars from alex oh, Kirsch. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, two dollars from Alice Kirsch. Gibbs is once again wrong, wrong, wrong. Ten dollars from Go Away. Representative Ken Buck is retiring exactly because of the Republican Party's inability to govern effectively. He's quoted as saying that this is the worst year since he joined the House in 2015. Thoughts? Two dollars from Artemis Fowl. I think I dodged a bullet on this discussion. Go Away for ten dollars. I'll donate twenty dollars if Rob can make an argument without making an allusion to some conspiracy or whataboutism. Ukraine is like Iraq, clown face. You know that's aggression. You know what's aggression? Taking Crimea with little green men. Five dollars from Artemis Fowl. I don't remember the military having a recruiting crisis under trump five dollars from go away rob knows better than ukrainians what they want they've only been trying to join nato for 20 years rob is a conspiracy preacher what a clown and five dollars from testicle johnson why are we as americans spending money to ukraine when homeless people exist in america free january 6 patriots okay with that said we're gonna we'll toss it back to the uh to the, the I panel. Love welfare programs. I love it. I love like, seeing Trump people talk about like expanding would, social safety nets here. This is great. Okay. I would. Right. Bridges. So there's a lot to say. I'll say here real quick. There's spending and then there's cutting spending and letting people keep more of their money. Uh, our, Gibbs is absolutely right about the disastrous Biden foreign policy. We can talk about that if you want. As far as keeping money back at home, he gave tax cuts, which did benefit poor and working class people and let them keep more of their own money. I will agree he spent frivolously and that's something that all fiscal conservatives should be mad about. 
Trump. Trump spat out the wazoo. It was ridiculous. We should criticize him for that. That's absolutely true. But he certainly wanted to spend billions back home on the border. And the Democrats and even establishment Republicans wanted nothing to do with that. They said that costs too much money. Instead, we need to fund gender studies programs in Afghanistan and ensure that the Taliban gets one of the strongest militaries in the world once we pull out and let all of our weapons there. Now, I want to, if I could have a back and forth with you real quick, Hutch, and then I'll yeah. answer those super chats. Uh, just real quick, will you, who sets the topic for a panel? Oh, I don't know. What, the boss. You I, I do. guess? It would be WIC, uh, right? You would yeah, agree with yeah, that? Sure. Yeah, I okay. WIC, can you repeat what you said the topic was at the beginning? Oh, uh, fuck. Uh, so is the Republican Party been um, positive or negative? Or has Trump been positive or negative for the Republican Party? We're going to talk about not only for the party, but for America as itself. Uh, it was right. A kind of thing. Wait, yeah. isn't that interesting? Now, I thought coming into this debate that it was going to be interesting, that it would just be, is it good for ours getting wins or ours getting losses, which is mm -hmm. a different conversation. I was pleasantly surprised because I find that to be boring when Wick said, and also, was it good for the country or not? Okay. So when you try to shame people saying, actually talking about the policies that mm -hmm. happened under Trump versus Biden isn't on topic, I'm not surprised you would do that because you can't defend the country under Biden because it's absolute shit. So you mm -hmm. try to browse people. People, people into saying that they're not actually talking about the topic when in fact it's you that misunderstood what the topic was. So I just sure. wanted to get that out. Seeing it's how no, you've conceived it. To be fair, that to, be fair be to everyone, on it's that. very sure. possible I communicated it poorly, right? Uh, this is just like, I, I, I like open conversations more than closed, but that's okay, it might be I on mean, me. Listen, this might be listen. on me. I'm sure. Uh, and yeah. maybe I misinterpreted it. And if that's the case, that's fine. But I do find it telling that like we, we are steering the conversation in like 25 different directions it's really difficult sometimes to have conversations with people like you rob because you you make like 10 claims and then if i want to unpack every single one of your claim it's just going to take up the whole debate and to me when i was told the topic of this debate the, at the crux of it was like has donald trump been good or bad for the party you're saying it was more than that fine i would like to dedicate some of this time to that question has donald well, we trump have, we has have, donald trump helped the Republican Party? I think that's a really important question. Well, listen, well, we have, if you're a conservative. We have, and then I just want to answer the super chat people real quick. Uh, but we have done that, right? We have had that conversation. I think almost everything I said, because I didn't speak first, was in response to something one of you brought up. So the idea that I'm just taking it to these fringe places, I think is nonsensical. To answer the super chats really quick, some person said they would like to see me answer something without some sort of conspiracy. I've been talking about things. I cited statistics on crime. I went directly to them. I cited the on the ground situation as to why we saw a spike in crime in 2020. I even corrected when people on my side cited statistics on COVID that I thought were erroneous. I've talked about things when I thought that Trump overspent. I've been pretty judicious, I think, in criticizing Trump when I should. So I would be happy to debate you anytime. It looks like you'd be comfortable crushing me into debate because I'm just a conspiracy theorist that's unable to talk. The person that said that I know more than the people on the ground of Ukraine. Well, if the people on the ground of Ukraine are sung -oh for this, so gung-ho for this conflict, why is it being reported that they're now going to institute a further draft to get 500,000 people? Surely they would have no need of people if all the people on the ground in Ukraine supported this. And yet we hear reports that hundreds of thousands of men tried to flee the country because they didn't support it. Of course, there will be people that are patriotic and anytime their country's invaded, even if they don't like the circumstances of what their country did leading up to that, they're going to fight for their home and soil. I don't begrudge that whatsoever. However, by the United States and particular people like Boris Johnson derailing potential peace talks, we end up in a situation where these Ukrainian men are going to die over and over and over again. And can anyone on this panel or elsewhere give me the credible scenario where at the end of the day, it doesn't end with Ukraine having to go from a position of weakness to the bargaining table and giving some sort of concessions. We've heard Rashad say, well, we can't trust Russia. Well, Russia would say we can't trust the United States. For example, they continue expanding NATO. I gave a laundry list of things that were happening, bases there and all that stuff. Rashad brushes it all aside, says we have to fight them so now. Why he's did happy. Sweden join NATO? He's why did Sweden he's, join NATO? Yeah. Why did happy. Sweden why did Sweden why join Sweden NATO? Finland why? NATO. It's because they feel now that they're being pressured by the international community to bolster the ranks oh, of NATO. Any other reason? Uh, listen, uh, listen, any other reason? Listen, this is like saying, of course, Rob. once there is, is there any other reason? Let, let, finish. Him, let him finish. Let him finish. Let me finish. Let him finish. The point that I was making is that acts of aggression from NATO made a conflict inevitable. I still cheer for the West more than Russia. I still hope Putin loses, what goes out. The people, what aggression? What aggression? Well, let's see. Uh, uh, do you think the United States would be happy if 200 miles off the coast of the United States that over 50 nuclear warheads were placed by China? Would we consider that an act of aggression? 
I, 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 don't, I don't know. That's a good question. Wouldn't Mr. Crisis remember that? Did we consider that an act of aggression? That's not the, that's not the question. Who's why tired are you on this question? That's not the question. Okay, that's not the question. Just, the question is, <laughs> why did Sweden oh, want to join? You're direction. saying because NATO pressured Sweden to join. Mm -hmm. You're, you're not sure even I'm acknowledging, not you're not even making a little bit of space. Maybe Sweden wanted to join NATO because they saw what Putin is doing in Ukraine and thought, you mm, weren't, I don't want to fuck listening, with that. You weren't there, listening to my answer. But I said, Lauren, please, let me that? finish real quick. Give me 15 seconds, I'll finish it up. If you were listening to my answer, you could see what I was saying is because the escalation made conflict inevitable. Yes, now people are going to draw sides. Just like you see people in the BRICS areas. It was that are inevitable for, please, sorry, let sorry, me sorry, finish. Sorry, 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 please, sorry. Just like you see people in the BRICS nations that are now consolidating against them. So we're setting up a situation with global superpowers picking one side or the other, and even small countries picking one side or another. My criticism was that the disastrous policies of escalation, such as bombing Assad, having the CIA monkeying around in Ukraine, stationing nuclear weapons right off the side, stationing bioweapon labs right off the side of Russia, these sorts of things predictably were going to lead to some sort of conflict escalation. That is not what Putin said when he gave his justification to Tucker Carlson just recently for invading Ukraine. His justification what was, his was that his justification was that there was like a historical land right issue. And the, the justification that he gave at the time was like, they're, they're Satan worshipers and they're transing the kids. He didn't even mention NATO as his justification that's, to join. That's not what true. So if you listen to, if you, if you listen to what he said, I'll just real, if you listen to what he said, you're absolutely right. It was absurd that he tried to give this historical justification. And if you disagree with that and you're on my side and you disagree with that, that's the exact same type of rhetoric that Gaza uses, that Hamas uses. These, well, this is the way things were a decade ago. That's horseshit. I'm not persuaded by that. But he also talks about how the CIA and other institutions were constantly aggressing against him. For example, he says that he talked to Obama personally about joining NATO and Obama seemed to be like, hey, that sounds like a decent idea. But when Obama goes back home, the CIA is like, fuck off. No, Russia's the enemy. Basically, we're going to keep aggressing. And he basically okay. said that they made it evident that it was going to be us versus them. We do have to we do have to expand this. I know a lot of other people want in. I'm, I'm appreciating the energy. I'm appreciating the back and forth. There's a lot of people here with a lot of strong opinions. We got a lot of a lot of things to talk about. We still got a lot of time to go. Um, Lauren wanted in and then I know Josiah wanted in. Go ahead. Wait, just a quick question to Rob. Would you want Russia to be able to join NATO? Yeah, sure. I would want NATO disbanded. I think NATO was a mill is an relic. It is a military alliance that's goal was to counter the Soviet Union. Once the Soviet Union dissolved by having that military alliance that at that point basically existed only to be a counterbalance to Russia that was in a set of, set of perpetual decline, it only made conflict inevitable. Again, like we're overlooking so much of this shit. The ally of Putin is Assad, who the United States has occupied his country and bombed him. And we're told that just, just so all the audience get here, what NATO is, that you're all celebrating it. Turkey's our NATO ally, correct? Anyone disagree? Well, they're, they're NATO. I don't know if they're our ally. Okay. We're told that we can't leave Syria, even though allegedly we've defeated ISIS there. And the reason we can't leave Syria, and when Trump tried to leave Syria, the generals lied to him. They committed treason when he tried to leave. The reason we're told we can't leave Syria is because if we do, our allies, the Kurds, will have genocide committed against them by our NATO ally, Turkey, where we station nuclear weapons. So we're admitting the official narrative is we are militaristically allied with genocidal maniacs and have given them nuclear weapons and they will wipe out the rest of our allies if we don't have a perpetual military presence that's the institution you are defending. Want to... lauren go ahead lauren 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 why do we want to be allied with more people who are somewhat genocidal and crazy why would we want to be linked because to russia in a similar way that we're linked to turkey if we we're already experiencing conflict Turkey. I can answer this in 10 seconds because by Tur by Russia right. joining NATO, it would merely become a political alliance similar to that of the UN or the United Nations. Okay, let's or go to, to uh, let's go to Josiah. It's then... already. Oh, unless yeah. you had more, unless you had more. Lauren, Lauren, was that was that what you wanted to say when you said you wanted to speak up? Was reply to? Well, I do want to apologize for the bad uh, stats that I gave earlier. That's, That's embarrassing, and you're right. It does seem like a lot of Republican states are kind of dead. Um, anyways, <laughs> and also um. And by the way, yeah. it's cool. And it's cool. Calling, it's cool. We're calling, no, no, yeah, let's, let's just highlight that, like, being being willing to say, oh, fuck, I fucked up and I got the wrong stats. People make mistakes. Commendable. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Continue, Lauren, and then we'll... Um, and then, but, yeah, I, the, I think the UN is widely unsuccessful because it's just now, like, this... We, 
the fact that the U.S. has the same um, equivalent morality votes as any other country that is equivalent to the U.S., such as like China, and um, it, it's all bullshit now. So I wouldn't want the same thing to happen here and have um, Russia become a part of NATO. I don't understand why you'd want that. So what do you want NATO to do without Russia there? What do you I... think the role of NATO is? It's a military alliance, correct? Against I can jump who? in for you, Lauren. I can jump in. Yeah, Wait, go, go for ahead. it. Okay, I would argue that one of the other benefits of NATO is keeping an eye on our own allies because allies can easily become enemies. One of the benefits of NATO is having military and economic oversight over the European nations. If we disbanded NATO, and let's say Germany, you said what? Wait, quick, quick question. Do you agree with Rob then that you would want Russia to become a part of NATO? Oh, no, not right now. I mean, in the future, I would love to be friendly with, Nate, with Russia, but not right now in, in any capacity, no. Because one, one of the things that conservatives argue or argue against is, or argue and say uh, Russia was feeling that they had to invade Ukraine because Ukraine was also feeling pressure to possibly join NATO. And um, other people were saying, well, we didn't want Ukraine to join NATO anyway because it's a largely corrupt country. So why would we want How them to be a this? part of NATO? But same with what's Let's uh, recenter yeah, things. And the question's first for you, Lauren, and then I, I want to go to Josiah and the others, right? But first for you, Lauren. Okay. Do you think Trump's uh, policies and rhetoric and how Trump influences the Republican Party's policies and rhetoric has been good uh, for our um, has been has been the way we want to deal with Russia or has it been um, hurtful to the way we should be dealing with Russia? Which do you think? And why? Well, I think. Yeah, I think um, leading with power, leading with force, and without uh, using force is much stronger than uh, leading weakly and then having to use force. So um, Trump was, his, his attitude, bad, I put basically. on both the positive and the negative things, it's, it's, he was much better at it than Biden. There was peace under him. Russia didn't invade under him. There so he's was, made the Republican um, and Party he was better. The problem, it, was, it, was also, it was bad because he was fighting with our allies a lot. Like he was fighting with Germany and he was fighting with Merkel. But then again, our allies were having shitty ideas, which, which is also what led to the Russian Ukrainian conflict in the first place, specifically the pipelines. And so, which were mentioned earlier. So, um, it, it's positive and negative. Okay, uh, I probably inartfully phrased it, right? And excuse my brain farts here, but uh, same question to you, Josiah, and then we'll, we'll open it up to the rest of the, the group here. Uh, Josiah, do you think that the uh, Trump's rhetoric, foreign policy, rhetoric, foreign policies, uh, actions during his presidency, right, and what he said he'd do if he is reelected, do you think that that has had a positive effect on the Republicans or a negative effect on the Republicans in regards to foreign policy? Why or why not? Go ahead. So I, I think a couple of things. Number one, first caveat that I want to say is I tend to focus more on domestic policy anyway. So in terms of like the technicalities and the intricacies, I'd probably have to defer to Rashad on this. But what I will say is something I hear a lot from Republicans and Trump supporters is this idea that, you know, something happened. On, again, it kind of goes back to what we blame or credit presidents of either party, be it Trump or Biden, for. And I think that there's a burden for any person making a claim uh, be it me with Biden or somebody else with Trump or, or whatever, where you have to draw like a direct connection to things that Trump did or didn't do or Biden did or didn't do, which contributed to a particular result. So one thing I hear quite a bit is that Russia did not invade any place during, <laughs> excuse me, uh, Trump's presidency. For this, for this to be persuasive to me and to for me to give Trump credit, I would need to see something that he did which triggered a particular response in Putin, right? So because you could easily explain it, you could sure. say, well, Putin was hoping that Trump would corrode NATO uh, and that he would, you know, it would either lend itself uh, well to an invasion down the road, or perhaps he thought that it would produce other benefits there. Because like the way I look at it is Trump want, Putin wanted Trump to win the presidency in 2016 and in 2020. He also wanted to invade Ukraine. So yeah. if he wanted these two things, why would we just automatically assume that Trump would prevent it? Um, it's kind of like, you know, that iconic moment where there was a solar eclipse and Trump looked up to it. Just because something happens when Trump 
is in office doesn't mean I'm going to necessarily give Trump credit for it. He's not responsible for the eclipse. I don't know that he's necessarily responsible for uh, Putin not invading Ukraine. Also, I believe Putin was building up his armed forces at the time, too. Rashad can correct me if I'm uh, not mistaken, an invasion force. Then you look at like other things that were mentioned, like North Korea. We have no tangible benefit from North Korea or from uh, Iran. You know, Trump pulled us out of the Iran nuclear deal. Thank God. I didn't see I'm sorry? I said, thank God that deal was trash. Oh, oh, gotcha. So, so, but I don't see any a tangible benefit from that either because uh, there was no deterrent for I Iran to not continue to develop its nuclear, uh, like its nuclear program, right? And they're closer now than they ever were to developing the nuclear program. Um, so again, I would need to see like concrete, um, you know, a causal relationship yes, there. And then the last well, thing I'll say is that uh, when it comes to just Trump's policies in general, um, or Trump's influence in general on the Republican Party in the country, um, I think one of the challenges is, and this actually kind of gets back to what Hutch was saying earlier, where the conversation can fractal, I think in good faith, because then you start like diving down into policy, and then you say, is it good or bad and compared to who, and then you're talking about Biden's policy. So I think it's tough to navigate this conversation. But I would also be interested to hear in, if, if people think that Trump was good for the Republican Party. Uh, I would like to hear what they think about um, Trump infecting the Republican Party seemingly with the narcissism. Like the, you have Republicans now, like Ken Buck, who is resigning from Congress, further shrinking that Republican majority in the House of Representatives to now just two seats. Uh, you have Republicans who are saying that they won't, like Nikki Haley supporters, Nikki Haley Republicans saying they won't vote for Trump because of his, you know, his corruption. They say, they say, those are his words, his corrupt behavior, his unethical behavior. Um, you also have this idea that, you know, Trump's above the law. He's right now trying to make the case before the Supreme Court that he's entitled to absolute presidential immunity, a notion which is should be insane for Democratic presidents or Republican presidents. So I'd love to hear something about that if okay. they think that perhaps Trump's narcissism has have, poisoned the GOP. Just, sure, I can answer that. Way, no problem. Just, just. We, we got a lot. We got a lot of people. I'm going to let all the Republicans or uh, all the people on Trump's side here respond. And then we're going to go to Rashad after all of them respond. So, Rashad, you I got a bit. To clarify the question. Just to clarify the question, do you want a causal relationship to Trump and actions against Russia? And in, and then number two, do we have a problem with it? Trump infecting us with narcissism. Are yeah, and, and to be fair, to be fair to you, I'm I, I'm I'm not going to set the burden so high. I need concrete proof that. But like, um, so like for example, just to give an example of like Biden, we I would credit, uh, you know, Biden with job growth because of the vaccine rollout and also for the American Rescue Plan, which stimulated the economy. So it's like something other than it just happened when Trump was president. Ergo, he gets credit. Can you point to something that he did or didn't do, which reasonably yeah. contributed to something that Putin did? Does that make sense? Yeah, I well, can answer. I, mean, I understood I, the question well, quite well. I can answer quite fluently if you like. Uh, it's, up, it's up to you guys. Yeah, you go for it. Well, you, you want me to go for it? Okay. First off, it's interesting well, you said the vaccine rollouts. Just, okay, just quick question. Can you tell me on average how many vaccines were being rolled out a day when Trump left office? Uh, I think it was getting close to a million. And how many was, was, it, was the average for up. Biden? Over a million. Okay, so about the same number. So, uh, no, I would say that, I mean, it wasn't like double the number or anything like that. Yeah, it was it, about the, the same. It wasn't, it wasn't like a million and a half. It was around the same number. In fact, Biden said it was his goal to roll out a million a day. That was being accomplished under Trump. Would you also admit that Biden said that he would be untrusting of the vaccine because he didn't think it could come out in the time frame that Trump was suggesting before the That's election? What he, That's what, what he said. said. Go ahead. Go ahead. What he, he said. He, he, what was happening was Trump was publicly pressuring the FDA. To, it's not true. To, no, he yes, wasn't. You, yes, no, he, he was. was. Yes, he was. Did anybody? Look, uh, we could do this real quick. I can pull up the sources. Yeah, well, no, so, but this is the, right there. Right here. Hold, this on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, This is the problem. So I, I, rec I recall Let's. some statement by Biden where he said that he would trust it only if the scientists confirmed yes. that it was efficacious. But this is what yes. I'm talking about. With all due respect, Rob, now we're making it about Biden and the vaccine. No, 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 no. I just, no, no. I, I just want to make the point because I, I, I will give the examples of Trump, but I just want to make the point because the examples you gave of Biden are actions that were already being taken under Trump. And to real quick, get to your point, Hutch. Did anyone from the FDA resign under this pressure because Trump was pressuring them? Uh, it, it doesn't matter. He was publicly pressuring yes the no. FDA. It okay, doesn't next, matter. Next that, question. You, no, next no, 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 question. No, 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 no. You asked about Biden saying something. I'm telling you there was a very specific context. He was not telling Americans don't trust the vaccine. You are next, wildly distorting what he next said. Question, did story. Anybody, yes. Next question. Did anyone under the FDA resign because of pressure from Biden when he was president over the vaccines? 
I, 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 have yes. no idea what you're, I have no idea what you're alluding to. Okay. Yeah, yes, two people did. So, I mean, you say so much bullshit. It's really hard to like fact check uh -huh. everything you say, but let's the, go. The, there, there. Okay, there you go. So yes. the point is what you can see, the very thing he accused Trump of doing, that he pressured them in unethical ways, and therefore the FDA was upset about this, and that's why Biden was justified in casting shade in the vaccine. It was actually Biden, when it came to boosters, so what did the Trump people do? at the FBI I, actually resigned because they felt they were being pressured from Biden. But I know that, I know that Josiah and Hutch didn't have shit all to say about that they didn't care about that oh, Jesus now, to Christ. get to the specific to yeah, get to the you, specific please. policies that trump did right one when it comes to foreign policy let's talk about that first it wasn't just policies that you would also admit that it's posturing it's actions it's diplomacy and things like that you would just agree trump with that. actions trump actions just okay. which would include right. so first off i think a lot of what trump was doing was that he was actually taking actions that were quite hostile and encircling of russia for example massively expanding our energy production and exportation was one of the worst things that could happen he also to russia he also put heavy sanctions on russian diplomats he also unlike obama actually provided militaristic defense to ukraine sometimes in which i didn't like like providing fighting javelin missiles to them. Trump was the most hawkish president to Russia since Reagan. He was, it's absolutely true. Now he said things like, oh, well, why aren't we working with Russia to fight ISIS in Syria? He was absolutely right to say those sorts of things. He walked softly, but carried a big stick. He said things that might assuage a dictator's personality and narcissism, but then enacted policies that were actually quite hawkish against okay. them. Biden on that, real quick, like yeah. there's a lot to say in this. You also make Biden, on the other hand, showed incredible weakness, incredible weakness. In fact, it emboldened our enemies. I agreed with the withdrawal of Afghanistan, but the way he did it, where you literally see pictures of people holding on to jet planes because it was such amateur hour, showed our allies that now is the time to act because the incredible incompetence and weakness at the top. You also yeah. make the mistake of saying that Russia wanted Trump to win. That's not true. Reporting from Michael Schellenberger just came out and there was reporting going years back in this. The memo that said that Russia wanted him to win that 17 intelligence agencies signed off was actually just written by about three people under John Brennan at the CIA. There's now just... evidence that, please, there's now evidence that there was credible information that actually Russia wanted Hillary Clinton to win for the same reason that he publicly acknowledged he wants Joe Biden to win this time because he finds both of them to be establishment politicians that are predictable and he knows how to navigate. Trump is seen as someone who's unpredictable so mm -hmm. our allies have to be on their toes because they're okay. worried they'll cross the line that Trump will go we after. You got to get some back and forth in here. And I know I, I see Rashad and, and chopping at the bit. Um, and I see you, Gibbs. You're chomping at the bit. I know, I know, I know. We're going to get as many people in as we can on this subject. But I want to give Hutch and Josiah a chance to respond to that really quick. Then we're going to Rashad. Well, Rashad, you're on their team too, so you can respond too. Then we're going to Gibbs, and then we're going to continue on. Go ahead. Rashad, Rashad, you seem really good with the foreign policy stuff. So why don't you go here? I want to hear your response to this. Yeah, please. Okay, so to, to to bring things back to the topic at hand, talking about how Trump's uh, foreign policy is affecting the success of the Republican Party. I want to argue with Rob because I like the fact that Rob is so populist and so into that shit because I haven't spoken to someone like this yet. So when we talk about Ukraine funding Gibbs, you spoke about, you know, sending all this money to Ukraine, blah, blah, blah. We do have to come to terms with the fact that we're sending 1% of our GDP. So we have Republicans selling this false narrative, people like Matt Walsh going on Twitter and saying, aren't you mad about the fact that food is being taken off of the plates of American children and being sent to all these oligarchs and governments all around the world, and yet the Republican Party, both pundit and politician, have yet to present any sort of public spending bills for the American people that are downtrodden, hungry, poor, homeless, a whole nine yards. So one of my issues here is Donald Trump his cronies, his henchmen, and the politicians that support him are selling the Republican Party a fake isolationist world in which we can pull away from the affairs of the world and somehow be safe from the affairs of the world, disbanding NATO, not being involved in Ukraine. Rob, you spoke about um, disbanding NATO and what's beneficial toward NATO outside of dismantling Russia. I mean, keeping those European nations, the last two world wars started in, Euro in Europe, the biggest war we've seen to date uh, since World War II happened in Europe, it's incredibly beneficial toward the United States geopolitically to have a very strong and stern eye and complete control over what goes on in Europe. And NATO is our foothold and control over Europe. I firmly believe that if Republicans currently have their way with the populist sort of anti-uniparty, anti-establishment, anti-, -establishment, anti -uh, uh, de uh, defense contracting nonsense. I firmly believe we are going to walk into a world where America is less powerful on the geopolitical stage, and that will negatively affect 
the Republican Party's ability to win in the future when Americans know that America will be weaker, will be softer, will be less involved geopolitically, less economically powerful. We will see that and Republicans will take a hit for that at the polls in the future. Can I, can I can jump I, in real quick and just say like prima facie, the idea that Vladimir Putin would prefer someone like Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden over someone like Donald Trump is absurd. The Republican, Did Party, do well under Trump? the Republican Party in 2012 nominated Mitt Romney to be their no, yeah, to, well. to be their nomination. He was sounding the alarm about Russia. Back, okay, he was sounding the alarm about Russia in 2012. Just four years later, you had Donald Trump coming in, who was uh, undermining NATO to the extent that now it's like a mainstream Republican position to be like, ah, fuck NATO. Let's just let like it's not our problem. Let's just let Vladimir Putin do whatever we want. What, whereas you see uh, Joe Biden, who is taking a very strong stance against Biden on the global stage making his job of annexing part of Ukraine way harder than it would be. Donald Trump is just openly saying like, nah, I don't think I'm gonna give Ukraine any money. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna negotiate a peace within 24 hours. What he means is just give land to Russia and just end the, the war that way. You're asking me to accept the, 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 the findings of a hyper-partisan guy in the Schellenberger who in my mind has zero credibility after the Twitter files. That guy is a fucking clown. How do you explain? Why would it suit Vladimir Putin's interest for Joe Biden to win, who is pushing for Ukraine to get more aid than Donald Trump. Make it make sense. Okay, it's simple, right? I'll be able to do this quickly. First off, you already give the rationale in the example you give. I don't know if you understand that the example you give actually disproves your point. You're right, Let's Mitt hear. Romney, a Republican, did talk about Russia being our biggest threat. And what did Obama say? What did the Democrat he, leader he, say? He, he, he poo-pooed poo him. He said, like, right. oh, whatever. We, so this is the Cold War. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so your argument is, so then going into 2016, clearly he would have repaired the Republican candidate other than the party that literally what laughed the, at the what idea. Was the rhetoric? Please, what was the rhetoric? Uh, uh, what was me, the rhetoric please, that Hillary Clinton was saying? Me, what was the rhetoric? Let me Go finish. Ahead. The evidence is quite clear that it wasn't about the rhetoric. He understood what the eventual policies would be. He understood that Hillary Clinton represented an establishment foreign policy that was predictable. He knew exactly how to react. With Donald Trump, he and other both enemies and allies are afraid they cannot predict what he would do. So it's hard to make moves. For example, Democrats, just, people like you, have bro. said, we can't trust Trump. He might drop nukes. The truth is, enemies could think that way as well. And the proof is in the pudding. When <laughs> Trump was in office, he was far more hawkish than Obama. You can't deny that he was. And Russia did quite poorly. When Biden was in office through his blunders in Afghanistan, his overarching incompetency, okay. we can see that Russia feels okay. emboldened. Clarifying please, question. There's more to say, but a Clarifying that's fine. question just for, for my own thing. Then I, I, Before I you ask that clarifying question, I'm sorry, there was a quick fact check I was trying to squeeze in there. So I found uh, sources which have the, the daily vaccination average under Joe Biden at 1.7 million, and it never got more than the daily average, uh, than it never exceeded 900,000 under Trump. So it was a colossal disparity. That's almost- and, and, uh, but, I, I will say, No, uh, say, uh, and then I'll have my clarifying question. Okay. That, right. The point is he cut a goal of around a million, which Trump was almost getting. And remember, they created the vaccine under Trump, which the Democrats were saying would be and physically Biden vastly impossible. Exceeded and the all vaccination Biden rate. did was like, Biden, OK, Biden let's accelerate it. And the that's what you, uh, let the me vaccination is worthless if it doesn't let get in people's clear, arms. Right? You like, lied when you, when you said that the rate respond. is the same. I understand the need to filibuster when making this stupid point. So all he did was, OK, let's produce more. And you're like, oh, for that, I give him credit for job creation. He didn't say produce more. No, no, vaccination rate. So vaccinations are when they get the And then the you arm. can re-explain if you think I'm wrong. Sure, but you ahead. don't Sorry. give Trump credit for having Operation Warp Speed, which, by the way, a lot of people on our side don't wait, like the vaccine. Give you don't for give that. him credit for the job. When did credit? I not give credit for that? What? You, you just said it. Let me repeat. Maybe you forget what you said. You said, I need to draw a direct line of a policy that happened before I could give credit. So, for example, with Biden, because of his vaccine plan and rolling out vaccines, I give him credit for job growth. You didn't say, and I give Trump credit for doing the more difficult job of actually creating the vaccines at a I speed said, that let's Biden use was saying Biden. was impossible. I said, let's use Biden as an example. So I was talking about Biden and gave a specific Biden action, which was the vaccine 
vaccination rollout, which was from a federal level that happened under Biden, and the rate of vaccination radically increased. You said it was basically the same between Biden and Trump. That is not okay. true. I'm it actually to nearly yeah. doubled. I'm going to ask my question now, and then I want to I want I'll let Rob answer it, and then I want to get to Gibbs because Gibbs is trying. He's doing his best here, and we love Gibbs. And Gibbs I'm trying not to. Email I'll you. send you the links, okay, buddy. It's okay. Um. So you said. Uh, and I'm just trying to understand here uh, that Trump was more hawkish than Biden when it comes to Russia, to Putin. Is that is that accurate? Was more, is that true? Was more hawkish than more, Obama. The more hawkish than Obama. Okay, thank you. Yes. Never mind. Different. Uh, then I, I withdraw my question because I was about to say, well, there there was some there was a lot of uh, things I was going to ask after that. But fair enough. Oh, if, I really... if I misheard, that's fine. If um, I, I, I could just ask real quick. Any of the three lefties can answer. I would be interested okay. if you could tell me what would Biden do with Ukraine? Because I don't have a fucking clue. I continue think he'll to, cave in. I think he'll keep sending the money. Biden, you continue to send them. No, Trump. Did I say Biden? I meant Trump. Oh, Trump. If Trump will, wins, what would he do? He will push to end Ukraine a day day one. Day I one. don't think he will. I hope so. I hope he does, but I don't think he will. Okay. But, I think he'll give in. Isn't, isn't, I don't think. Isn't that, I, I isn't that illuminating, though? Isn't that illuminating? Like, if you were if you were Vladimir Putin, okay? Let's mm -hmm. say, take it back to Vladimir Putin 2012 or put him in, put, put yourself in the in his mind right now. If you had, if, if you were trying to shape public opinion on what, if you could only pick one thing, what do you think he would be trying to shape a, a, a American public opinion on? That would translate to like Putin? actual p political consequences. Yes. Uh, the weakening of the United States. The weakening of NATO. Yes. The weakening and of the United NATO. States in general. And NATO's who, just and, and who's this is the bulk of the military me, might behind NATO. And this is and this is me gesturing broadly at the Republican Party right yeah. now. This is it, you know, the, you like, made NATO is an extension. Just now, do not support NATO. I don't think conservatives have supported NATO for a while. It ha it's it's well simply not true. Oh, well, I, 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 all right, Gibbs, you got it. You got it, Gibbs. Gibbs. Yeah. I, so first of all, I, 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 all right. I've broken with Trump on some of his policies. I believe in NATO. However, what Trump has done, and this is a big one. Y'all want some policies? I'm going to give you some policies. One of the things Trump has done is he's asked NATO allied nations to carry their fair share and threatened them if they don't that he's going to leave, which has incentivized them to start uh, adding more to their uh, defense budgets. We now have these countries, since he's threatened this, have been spending more on their defense budget. Let's talk about some other policies, though, that I mean Trump has been good for the uh, economy. Because we've been spending a lot of time on foreign policy. And I think that it's a pretty clear uh, statement that we can all say Trump was better on foreign policy than the utter abysmal disaster that has been Joe Biden, the I worst foreign policy president in history. I, do not but, I mean, he, well, that's fine, but you're just wrong. Not, but anyway, no. actually, so first of all, Trump actually gave tax cuts. That incentivized the uh, uh, economy for the lower, the middle, lower classes. They'll keep more money in their pocket. Here's another one. He set up the border wall. He started that, which the Biden administration has used the National Guard to go and tear down parts of. In fact, he's used the National Guard against uh, Texans uh, to sit here and tear down their wall in treasonous behaviors. And Trump has sat here and said, "Look, this is this is bad behavior." Here's another one. Uh, uh, while Trump was president, here's the big one. Trump allowed us. Under, with his policies to become the largest producer of oil and natural gas, according to Forbes and the Daily Mail, uh, uh, worldwide for oil and natural gas, right? Depending mm -hmm. on how you define petroleum, right? So here's the thing. If we passed Saudi Arabia. We are over here, over, like, becoming energy independent. We're stopping our, our reliance on foreign oil. Like, yeah, these are all good things. This is all good things for the Republican Party. Why no. would you want us to be dependent on countries like OPEC, like, yeah. uh, that are in OPEC, to be dependent on these countries and beholden to places like – you'll say y'all don't like Russia? Why do you want Biden to weaken domestic oil and gas production when he's stopping the natural gas pipelines? He's stopping oil production in areas this is the thing that biden has unequivocally done domestically that uh, you know, trump you're, trump pushed and so you're, you're sitting here saying you want actual policy and i'm giving you actual policy and here. then you want to go into denial here's one thing i will give you guys okay the one thing that trump did that i actually think was quite good is he actually got the mexican president to invest 1.5 billion dollars in border did you guys know that I see what you're doing the here. President to invest. I don't know what that, you're talking. That was about. actually Joe Biden that did that. I don't know yeah. if you're aware, but Joe Biden actually got the Mexican government work? to invest 1.5 billion dollars. Yeah, How's it working? 
to to, to, right. the, to the to the border situation right now. It's Just working well. Because working well. One president, we had one president. We had one president that said he was going to get Mexico to pay for the wall, and then we got another president that actually got. Oh, we have another Mexico president. 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 We need dedicate one point five billion dollars to the border wall. It, anyway, it's working. Right. Border situation. So the border is great, right? He, Biden's doing a better job on the border, correct? Yeah, it's absolutely but, abysmal. What, they listen. You, your party entered into negotiations with the Biden administration that lasted for like four or five months. You had a bill that the- That was, by the way, led. Yeah. Hang on, Poison. real quick, yes. to Hutch's Poison. point, that was led, led by, Rider. That was by, Rider. Led by Rider. Langford, a, a Republican who was endorsed. Uh, can you turn your mic up a little? It's, is anyone else having trouble here? No, Josiah. Are you, fucking with me? Well, are you fucking with me, buddy? No, no, uh, you sound soft to me. I'm, I'm honest to goodness. I'm sorry. This guy, we, uh, okay. D okay, so I see what he's doing here. No, um, so Langford was a Republican senator endorsed by Donald Trump in large part because of his hawkish conservative stance on the border. And he was the lead Republican architect for that bipartisan border bill that was endorsed by the anti-Biden pro-Trump Border Patrol Union. I'm sorry, I'm gonna throw it right back to Hutch. I just wanted to throw that in there that no, the architect no, you, you, was you a got, Trump loyalist. I could respond to this if you like. It's up to Oh, I, I, I'm ready for the border debate. Let's go. I'm always ready. <laughs> well, well, I'll give it to, well, I'll, 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 I'll let Gibbs, Gibbs yeah, I'll let yeah. Gibbs Well, so, this. well, hang on. I was just addressing that point to clarify for Hutch, but I was also promised 30 minutes ago um, because I do think it's interesting, especially it's related to the topic about has Trump infected the GOP with his sense of narcissism? And we would say on the left cultishness. I'm not going to use that word just in case it's like incendiary, but that's what we would call it, that he has made the GOP a cult. And given like Rob, for example, he's critical of Trump. Even in this conversation, he's 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 criticized Trump. Does that not bother you, Rob? I mean, I know you're a populist, but don't you want the GOP to stand for something like to be at least somewhat discernible from Trump. It's okay, here's how we're gonna, yeah, here's how we're gonna do this because you've you've tossed something to, yeah. to Gibbs, you've tossed something to Rob. We're gonna let yeah. Gibbs respond first, get that back and forth, and we're gonna give it to Rob. Is that fair? Yeah. I think that's fair for everyone. Okay, Gibbs, go ahead. Yeah, so the border bill, the border bill is unequivocally anybody that's actually dealing with the border is unequivocally one of the worst bills in history. Every single item, line item on that bill, I could go point by point and tell you why it's a poison pill I did. Gibbs, I did. would you I please mean, tell the Border Patrol Union, you know, those yeah, people will, who I'll, actually I'll, work I'll, the border, I'll, would you I'll, tell I'll, them I'll, that? I'll, 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 is that who we should listen to? I will address that. In fact, here's the thing. If by your conservative it, logic, yes. By I'm saying that it's a concern. I will address that. If you're sitting here getting nothing, of course you're going to want something. Something's better than nothing if you're the Border Patrol, right? There you go. So on, you agree on, that the border, on. that that I, bill no, is better no, than nothing. No, I absolutely do not. Here's what it is, though. The Border Patrol is a government agency that's sitting here. They're corrupt. They're not doing their job, which is why the Texas National Guard has had to step up and do their job for them. They're every, If you look at every single issue on the border bill, they just want more, more money because, you know, every agency in the government always wants more money. But if we can sit here and look at the border bill, there's no, there's not one line item that actually does anything to solve the border crisis. It was created by rhinos who are not true Republicans. They're basically, like, you know, we all know what rhinos. Langford? And, and all, rhino? Absolutely. The Trump endorsed if, 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 James if, if, Langford? I don't, I don't care. I don't care. Trump endorses if you, all kinds if you, of if you back the border bill, you are not a Republican. You're this a rhino. This is what rhino. he means when he says cult, by the way. This is what he means when he says cult, by the way. This is exactly what Josiah was talking about. It's not a cult. Because I'm, I'm, I've been a very anti-Trump on a lot of issues, and this is one that I'm not. Trump is right about the border. We sit here. All we have to do, Biden has to do, instead of this bullshit border bill, is maybe enforce the laws on the books. Why do we need this border? Like, what? Bill, like, I don't know, maybe that if you cross the border illegally, we send your ass back. We don't need to just sit here and start giving asylum. We don't need to make these alternative programs where up to 100,000 people can live here free of charge. We don't need to sit here and incentivize people to for an easier on asylum process. Road. The only reason that stops is because of Title 42 and the emergency powers. But we're, we were doing like catch and release for while they adjudicated asylum claims, which last up to like five or six years. This bill would have brought that down to six weeks. And you're saying it wouldn't have wow. done anything. Like the, the, immigration situation. the average weight, the average, this is how I know you don't know what you're talking about. The average weight Enlighten is eight. Me. The average wait for an asylum person is eight years. And you're telling me 50 new judges is going to cut that? Most estimates say that's going to cut it down to five or six years. Some are saying it's uh, the thing, the three or four. So if, you're saying, if you're sitting here talking about six weeks, you don't know what you're talking about. If you're I could, clearly if, not dealing with the border issue. If I could jump, like, that's if like, jump in real quick. So I don't remember the exact ledge, the exact law, but the court oh, ruled I, I, on the portion of the law provision during Trump's alleged Muslim ban, which was really just a list of 
of countries that Obama came up with that were exporters of terrorism, so it was never a Muslim ban. Nonetheless, the courts ruled that there is a specific provision that gives the executive authority under emergency to control groups of people that can't come to the border. That could be swathing, saying no one can come to the border, or specific countries or specific groups. So Biden has the power to do that. He has chosen not to. The argument that people make, and you two can tell, or you three can tell me if I'm wrong, is that there's no money. We need more money. Is that correct? I mean, that's part of it. It's, it's, no, 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 it's, no, leave them answer. I want to hear no, the there is said. that. No, funding is a part of it. It's not just that, though. It's 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 using that funding to expand on uh, like immigration judges, immigration lawyers, okay. to hire so more border patrol, border patrol, border patrol agents. Hold on, let him answer the question. You got to let to, Hutch to answer. Hutch, to invest go ahead. in smart technology. I mean, there was all kinds of usage for these funds. It's not just funding. But yeah. Uh, okay. Well, but if we have the authority now to keep all of those people out and you say we need more judges, we need Here's, new guards, okay, please, uh, let me finish real quick. So then right, the problem right. is that there's not money, correct? That we needed the money in this bill, Rob, can correct? you restate? I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Can Rob problem. restate? I'm sorry, Rob. What? A, could you restate? I'm sorry. The, the authority that Biden has now that he's not using? Yeah. So if yeah. you go back and you look at the court case where the courts adjudicated Trump's alleged Muslim ban, whatever the specific – I wasn't prepared for this, but That's I've fine. looked That's this fine. up and I've seen the – so yeah. there's an actual provision that they cite in law that says one of the powers that the executive has is that it's within his rights to keep any group of people that he wants out if he declares an emergency. So that's why it was legal for Trump to say we're not going to accept these countries. He could have said we're not going to accept any immigration or any asylum seekers. So that law is on the books. The courts have ruled that's legitimate. Was it I'll title just 42? answer for – What's that? Was it title? Is that the authority? The title? I thought that was the title 42 authority that Trump used to expel people under COVID that he was able to basically no, just. Tell you, that, that, that it is a different provision. I believe, gotcha. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. But, but uh, I'll, I'll just answer for what I think that yeah. possibly Hutch is trying to get to, which is, well, well, one of the problems is we need like all this new tech and we need all of these new judges. And what Biden and the Democrats are trying to say after three years of telling us there was no border crisis now in an election year saying, oh, yes, there is a crisis and it's the Republicans fault, right? What they're trying to tell us, by the way, people that encourage the mass migration by saying it shouldn't be illegal. We hope that they come. And then that's exactly what happened. And they flooded. Nonetheless, I get back to the point. What we see is they're saying we need more money and we can't just through executive fiat send money. Hey, aren't they sending 300 million to Haiti today? Didn't yeah, I mean, just did that? Why couldn't he send that money to the border? Well, and then, and on, on top of that, and on top finish, of that, and then I know Lauren's trying to get into. So. Yeah. So, and on top of that, right? So, all these provisions y'all talking about, the people down here that are actually dealing with it know that these are incentives to come, right? So, like y'all talked about, like, oh, we need all this high tech stuff. All right, Texas built a uh, barrier that was called inhumane in Shelby Park, right? In Shelby Park, it was averaging 1,500 people a day. Now, since that barrier went up, and the Texas National Guard defended it from the, uh, you know, U.S. government, uh, they stopped it down to two to three people every other day. Now, we had a border surge in an area where Biden's administration had torn down the uh, Trump border in Laredo uh, just two weeks ago. We had a surge. 21,000 people came through. One of the provisions in that border bill was that we're going to get 50,000 beds. What? Oh, so in three days, we had half that amount already filled, basically. Half that amount filled in three days. And you want to sit here and say that this was any kind of realistic okay. solution? No, this what? was just a political what? scam dunk for like what? the, the Biden them to say, "Oh, it was good," and Trump called him out. And Trump there, called him out. Funds for Haiti, Biden. by the way, were de were taken from the Department which, of Defense. What? I think that that's probably the reason. And Ron, I want to bring up Haiti. But they can't make a defense issue. Well, no, no, it's not. It's a, it's a DHS issue. It's a, it's a different, it's a right, different executive branch. I want to bring, I want to bring well, no, no, up it's, it's impounding funds. I think Trump actually got, if I'm not mistaken, a court struck down when Trump tried to impound funds for his border wall when it wasn't congressionally approved, and the court struck it down. Kind of the same thing. I don't think. So that, what? What is the hold on, hold on, hold on, was it defense hold on, for Haiti? Hold on, hold on, one at a time. One at a time. Because I think uh, Haiti, if I'm not mistaken, is be like being attacked by like gangs or whatever. Like cannibal, like a coup in Haiti. Cannibal, there's so. a cannibal <laughs> gang. There's a cannibal gang that's basically taken over. The guy named Barbecue yeah. is in charge. Basically, and it's you united the cannibal? gang. Yeah, it's a cannibal oh, gang. They have videos oh, and stuff, allegedly or whatever. Like some of the videos haven't been. Are you getting this because Trump said Hannibal Lecter's are like coming into oh, the no, country? No, he's not lying. No, there's, no, there's, there's not a, lying. a. Hold on, just, is just, just, just so everyone knows, there is some allegedly, and I've seen some videos to suggest this is the case. 
Um, okay. There are cannibal gangs in Haiti that are yeah, attacking so, the guys. Okay. Right yeah, now. and the guy's uh, the guy's name is Barbecue allegedly because he barbecues people, right? That's like in charge of this, right? I don't so, know about that, but it's a it's yeah, a thing. allegedly, anyway. it's alleged. Anyway, so there's the thing though. So Haiti has been an, an utter disaster. We talked foreign policy earlier, and I'm glad you brought up Haiti because part of the reason that Haiti is such a mess is because the Biden administration has sat there and stuck by the the president that has been super unpopular in Haiti, and they've stuck by him, and it's created this mess, which just goes. Goes back okay. to Biden being terrible foreign policy okay. and Trump we, being better at it. We gotta let them respond, and then we gotta go to Lauren. Then we, Rob's gotta ad address the cult part. So uh, I haven't forgotten you, Rob. Yeah. Um, and gang, if you're I'm liking this it, content, if you're got liking this content, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Come on, give me money, super chats. I'll read super chats at the top of the hour before we end. Don't worry, give me money. Okay, Lauren. Then uh, or first respond to to what uh, Gibbs said. Then Lauren. Then Rob. Yeah, I just thought Admiral oh, wait, 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 and Robert got on a good point hmm. about the about the border bill being a poison pill and everything. But that to me, that's not even the major issue. It doesn't even matter what policies are in place or what laws are in place. When you have illegals coming in and the Biden administration is putting them in planes, shipping them around the country and already illegally store like it doesn't matter what laws are on the books or what the numbers are when we know that the Biden administration is already illicitly acting when it comes to this. So um, I find that exceedingly frustrating, especially when you're not when they're acting illegally then and we're using FBI statistics. You, to be it, monitoring these types of things and other types of crimes, then how can we possibly rely on the same people who are taking these statistics then to be um, arguing these numbers? Furthermore, you, um, I just wanted to quickly comment on the cults comment. Um, I find it ironic that voting for a president or having support for a president is cultish, but Trump derangement syndrome isn't considered a cult to you. Um, I think the fact that we talk about Trump as often as we did, um, like two years into Biden's presidency before he started running for office again, the, the fact that we blamed every single problem on Trump, the, that people think that he is like Satan reincarnated is much more cult-like than any yep. MAGA movement could ever be. Okay, so this is a what about it. I'll just, let's just grant it. Let's just grant it. Fine, there's, there's Trump derangement syndrome. My question was whether or not this cult of personality is having a deleterious effect on the Republican Party. I'm not even gonna fight you on that. That's fine, there's TDS out there. But what about the relation, the cult of personality aspect with Trump and the Republican Party, do you think it's good for the GOP, especially when you consider he's a 78-year-old man, he's going to die eventually? What happens to the party then? Well, it's interesting, and it is worth one talking about. Like certain... about. One thing that I liked about the Republican Party growing up is how respectful we were. You know, Reagan never took his jacket off in the Oval Office, whereas, you know, the Clintons are taking their pants off. So I always considered us to be like the, respect, the, po the party of modesty and respect and everything. So I don't like... Everything that's so brashish about him, but simultaneously he calls out status. He calls out status Republicans. Um, he calls things as they are, and he and he makes it. He makes politics entertaining, and Republicans Honestly, were wildly boring. Before. So Hillary wow. and Bill are gonna send the goons to come get you first and foremost. <laughs> then on top of that, using Rhino to like hold people who don't suck Trump's dick at political gunpoint is part of the cult shit that Josiah is talking about, where people can't say, you know what, I disagree with this this guy. I uh I don't believe in his ideology or his policies. Rhino, 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 you turn the entire voting base against someone for disagreeing with this man. You don't think you guys are wrong for holding these people at political gunpoint, taking every, Laura Trump said, <laughs> I'm gonna take every penny from the RNC and direct it toward Trump, a billionaire, I think. Trump's legal battles, leaving the, leaving, leaving the down ballot, allegedly, leaving the down ballot, fighting for their fucking lives. And, and also to Rashad's point, to Welcome. Rashad's point, since the, since uh, Lauren mentioned an irony, it's ironic that if Trump heard what you just said, Lauren, there's a 50-50 chance or better than 50-50 odds that he'd issue a shit ton of mean tweets about you. He'd hate your guts because you dared to publicly criticize him. You know that he is thin skinned yeah, in that right. respect. So that's right. I'm not sure. I'm, I know you've got thick that's skin. True. I know you wouldn't bother Do, you. Can so, I weigh in? 
Uh, yeah, and I don't disagree. Just uh, let me throw you a bone here. There are things about Trump where he is definitely the type of dude that you have to be all in with him. I don't like that. There are people that surround themselves with Trump that like, you know, I think are terrible. And even at the influencer level, they're fucking terrible people going after people's wives and shit. It's fucking disgusting. And I find that there are a small group of people that Trump could come out one day and be like, yeah, I'm for the Second Amendment. And then the next day he could come out and be like, we should ban AR-15s. And these people will be like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Whatever he said one day to the next. There are are those people now those people oh. exist with other politicians right and left as well but i'll agree they're more vocal under trump there's a reason for that though which would be a long-winded way to say that they really thank trump for actually speaking up for him because people felt in my area of the world that no one spoke up for them culturally or politically for decades and so one guy speaking up unfortunately some people think because he said some nice things about me one time i have to be all in and i'm never allowed to criticize him that's a terrible idea and if you're listening and you're religious you're a religious right person your book tells you that you should worship no man so don't worship that man criticize him when you feel like it it's absurd to think he's beyond reproach i'll leave you jump in then well, to, I'll, reciprocate I'll to the, the good I'll faith to, to reciprocate the good faith i'm sorry real quick hutch but to reciprocate the sorry. good faith I, I guess my question is uh and i appreciate that and i do you how do you control for that i guess is what i'm saying like how do you you say it's like a it's a vocal element of the gop that there are other aspects of this in other parties i grant you that but that it's 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 relatively vocal and prevalent in the gop with trump are you not worried about it i know you acknowledge it but to what extent are you worried about it and what should be done to control for that well, I'm worried about it, but I have to look at, I'm not worried about it near as much as a litany of other things. And you know this from talking sure. to me before, Josiah, my issue, unlike probably at least the lefties on the panel, I'm guessing is, I don't really give a shit about a specific politician. I understand that one bad president will come and go, one bad FBI director comes and goes, one bad senator comes and goes. I have more of a problem with the institutions themselves. So for example, I think, Josiah, you're absolutely correct. You point out to Lauren that her criticisms of Trump could lead to some mean tweets. You remember what Chuck Schumer said criticizing the FBI gets you? Remember that? Oh something about that they're going to investigate you. I can't remember the quote. I think right, really that they'll find six ways of Sunday, which is exactly what they did. So when you talk, it, and I find it interesting in your opening statement, you took about you talked about this when you're talking about the success of the Republican Party. Two issues you talked specifically, other than whether or not they're winning elections, were fundraising. In other words, how wealthy people feel about them, not the average people that the constituent mostly represents. And then the other thing you talked about was his corruption, the court cases. Well, the TDS that you all exhibit on mm -hmm. your side is. And I'm not saying you personally, but it is probably you. You are willing to overlook the corruption from these institutions because at the end of the day, your political ideology is hating Trump. That's what it is. It's not, oh, I am a fiscal okay. conservative or okay. I am a progressive. Okay. I do got to withdraw that good faith. We were so fucking close. Real, 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 give you a chance no, to respond. No, 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 hold on. Hang on just a second. I'm, I'm, 40, I'm 40 years old, man. I got into politics when I was, when I was 18, okay? okay? So my interest in politics goes well beyond anything that that involves trump like he definitely like energizes people on the left mm -hmm. he has certainly got a lot of people interested in politics for the first time that is for sure true but to, to, accuse, to accuse like me of like only giving a fuck about trump is ridiculous you don't know anything about me i don't know why you would say i wouldn't generalize yeah, I, I don't think that that was so, good let's do, let's would... let's real quick uh so you're the same age as me roughly i'm 39 so Great. uh when yeah. you were in when the iraq war was coming for or against the iraq war against firmly yes I what was, did you I, think I, about what did you think about our intelligence agency liars um i mean back then it was like the the, the Back then, what like in hindsight, what we know is that the Bush administration cherry picked raw intelligence that was given to them by the intelligence agencies, and the intelligence was, agencies was, went it with more, it. it. Well, the, the the executive branch, the head of the executive branch, mm -hmm. is granted a broad amount of deference, and so like, yeah, I mean, sure, yeah. Did I you mean, did you favor that was obviously you favor bank that was that was that was every country is going to have black marks on their on their on their ledger or whatever. Did you the, favor the, bank bailouts? Sorry, say that again. Bank bailouts? Did you favor them? I'm just going were, through the seminal moments, like in our life, of like big political moments. All right? They were they were necessary. Yes. So you did favor the bank bailouts, right? I did you? I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say like, oh, I love the fact that like okay. we bailed banks out. I'm saying it was necessary. Yes. Did you think, for example, the accusation that Trump was colluding with Russia was a big event that needed investigated? Yeah. 
do you think that it was a big event when we found out that the actual collusion with Russian was Hillary Clinton's team collusion with the suspected Russian spy yeah. named Igor Dyshenko? Do you think that we, needs we, investigated? We, we just fundamentally disagree on these things. So. No, it's not a matter of disagreement. Let me finish. Let me finish. It's not a matter of disagreement because what I find yes, is, yes, you are yes, correct that there are people that have political points and things like that. But all of it is superseded by their hatred of Trump. So unfortunately, no. yes, unfortunately, no. people like you are a dime a dozen. For example, you'll say that you have some sort of core political Believe. For example, you'd say yes. the idea of corruption, you've all said it here, the idea of Trump being corrupt, that's a really important thing. Then when I crush you in a debate step by step, which I could do anytime you want, talking about the double standards and how people like Hillary okay. Clinton was corrupt or Joe Biden was corrupt, you'll default at the end of the day if I prove that. You'll either one, just completely ignore it, or second, what you'll do is say, Hunter Biden, say it, say his second, name. Say second, his what name. you'll do, say second it. thing you'll do is you'll say, fine, they should have arrested them too. But you don't mm -hmm. speak up about it. The truth is you're okay with the double standard because you hate Trump. Your Back. other values are on the back burner because you think Trump is an existential threat and therefore breaking a little eggs to go after Trump is worth it at the end of the day. That's Rob, why you Rob, have TDS do, and why I, it's worse you than you the Trump. You gotta let call. Hutch respond. You gotta, you gotta let Hutch, you get to sure. respond. Go ahead. I, I, I'm not even gonna, like this, what you're, you don't know me, Rob. If you wanna have a conversation like, uh, like and to. we can kind of pick each other's like ideologies and I can give you sort of a sense of what I believe that is, has existed independent of Trump for two decades now. But we all and have so, beliefs and, before and, and some things And some things have changed or whatever, but like, yeah, we can have that conversation. But I wanna go like, what I wanna do is bring it back. When, when Josiah was talking about the cult of personality, I think a really good way to like bring it into the discussion that we were just having is to go back to that bipartisan um, uh, immigration bill. I just wanna oh, know like go. real quick, real quick, how does everybody on this panel generally feel about bipartisan efforts to get things done during a divided government? Would you say that it's- I, I will like, address that. I'll address that right now. I'll, I'll address that. Just real, I just wanna say will, it'll be generally short. in favor of it. I will. No, I am in favor. I, I am in favor of it. And here's why. By by partisan. Let's get to the, hey, I'll stop, 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 stop. I d let's get a, a just a a short yes or no from everyone because that is what he's asking. Bipartisanship. Are you in favor of it or not during a divided government? It's value government? neutral. I it's like it. Neutral. I think well, bipartisanship not, is good. But that's Rob, you think it's, it's a, a you think it's value it neutral, right? It depends it on what right. right. I'm it with actually good. Ironically, I'm with Rob right. there. I I, I think it's value neutral. They bipartisanly agree to invade Iraq. I know you're both partisan, right? That's what we're talking about. What we're talking about. Yeah, but that ignores. But what we're talking about is what we're talking about is an effort to to combat gridlock. And what we see in the polls is that broadly broadly speaking, Americans want to see Congress get together and actually do things when you have a divided government. Yeah, there is depends. an appetite for that. And the extremes of both parties push heavily against this kind of thing. So you'll see like progressives that talk about they don't want to do like any bill if it if it means they don't get Medicare for all. And then you have Republicans say they don't want to do an immigration bill because all of their line items were not met. No, I think a no. good example of this no, is also no. Israel-Palestine. No. That's a perfect example on the left of people sure, who won't yeah. do anything. Exactly. Right, unless May Palestine I offer a clarification, Hutch, then that's I want to I want to make sure Lauren gets a chance to answer. They can't hear you. Gives, get a chance to answer, etc. Lauren, you, Gibbs, you fucking with me. I just want to say that that Donald Trump doing what he did and killing that bill is an example of how his extremism is Thank not God. only is not only hurting his own party, but it's hurting the country. Most people want to see an immigration bill, and if he would have just come out and not said anything or supported it. Then of course Republicans are not going to get everything they want. Obviously. That's saying if I get everything they want, obviously. But the prop, but the but the aim of the bill was to ease the burden of no. our currently overburdened system on our border that is not built to withstand this level of influx. But no, okay. that, you're exactly right. right. I'll answer this really quick, right? Okay. Congress is massively unpopular because for years and years, they basically agreed on bipartisan things on the most important issues, which ended up fucking over the average people in this country. Yes, it's easy through polling and questioning to say, don't you want people to work together to solve problems? Of course, everyone will say yes. The problem is these thousands of pages bills that almost no one in Congress reads that spends all this money that has this archaic language, they spin it to the American people through their control of media saying, oh, this solves the border. It's bipartisan. It solves the border when it didn't do that nobody yes, said it solved the border nobody's, nobody nobody said it solved please the border. please nobody nobody said said it the border. they said it helped address the problems at the border yes. but it actually exacerbated them and the exactly. problem is that the, why if, would the, the border, border union sign on for it if it exacerbated it if it, uh, holy fuck oh, the border God. union signed on to it because the wait, reason wait, 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 you have like a minute to respond go ahead someone else gibbs go 
Yeah, I, I, I so I want to say I wanna, you're adding a lot here. Thanks, I, I, Lady I wanna, Wick. I want, I want to address the voting thing again. So, so, yes, so I turn on each other, too. please. I, so yeah, this is gonna be quick. I, I, I'm gonna say to your qu uh, question, it depends. Bipartisanship is good when it's an actual concerted effort to like solve a problem, which the border bill was not, right? And there's a reason why I say this is like, a, 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 like true statement. Like I, we, we, I've read the bill in like all 659 pages, like in depth. Like I'm avidly against it, and I'm not a diehard. Trumper. I mean, I know I'm Trump like right now because you know we, we, it's, it's Trump time, right? Like it's time. This is who we're behind. This is our candidate, right? But when it comes to the border bill, it's it's dog shit, right? And there's a reason why bipartisanship doesn't work. For example, we have the Lake and Riley bill coming out right now, and Democrats are already doing the never Trump thing with it and doing their own cult of personality, which the Lake and Riley bill has already got bipartisan support. And Democrats in the Senate and some in the House that did vote against it are just unequivocally going against it and screaming, "Oh my God, this is terrible!" It's racist, yada, yada. In fact, I would say the bipartisanship problem is even less so on the Republican side than it is on the Democrat side. Because, in fact, I was watching MSNBC last night, right? Because I watch all the news agencies because that's how you get your news. You watch all of them and see the spin. And Rachel Maddow and crew were sitting here talking about how whenever we bring up issues like the border, we bring up issues like the economy, what's the first thing they do? They say, hey, Republicans are racist. They're making these race issues. We're voting on race alone. And that's the thing Democrats have done since at least the early 2000s, right? They've sat here and turned it into <laughs> race issues instead of like what Bill Clinton said to George Bush Sr. back in the day. It's the economy, so, stupid. Or it's so the border, yes. stupid. So yeah, I think by Partnership is good when it's actually before, genuine. Before before yes, we get before where... we get responses, I do. Lauren's trying. Lauren's trying to get oh. in. And I want to get oh first shit! Time. I'm sorry. No, Thank I'm you. sorry, Lauren. Just, yeah, Lauren. Just quickly with, with bipartisanship, I think it is kind of what you just said. It sounds good on paper. However, it's always poison pilled. It should there should be page limits. We have page limits in most parts of law, so we should have absolutely page limits on all bills going forward so that we don't have um, sneaky stuff thrown in. And furthermore, this goes back to what we were talking about with the original topic at hand, is Trump good for the American party? And then your points are, oh, well, the American, uh, the Republican party is more split. You guys are calling us status. It's this Trumpism. It's this cultism. It's that Trump is just not... Uh, is not conceding to this bipartisanship ideology anymore, which was getting Republicans nowhere, because even when we pretended to be agreeing on something, we were just conceding to the left continually for, for a long period of time. And Trump came in and said, I'm no longer a status. I'm no longer just going to agree with everything. I'm going to point out what is a poison pill, and we are going to have and people we're going to have. That's, that's, not, that's not, that's, hold on, hold on. That's not what... You, you and so many people from this populist, you guys are demonizing experience in Washington, you're demonizing cooperation, and you're calling anything that's against exactly what you want a poison pill. Yeah. No one side has the answer to everything. No one side, not our you side, not your side. Well, more important than what we have to cooperate, that's that's we have to cooperate to get shit ridiculous. done that can at least somehow meet in the middle. But if you're championing and prioritizing this winner takes all mentality where Trump comes in and just completely clears out all of Washington of anyone who's not sucking his dick at that moment we're not actually benefiting the nation we're just riding the coattails of a cult so right right there actually I thought Rashad so just made a really interesting funny. point really bad well, hang on. So well hang on even well hang on just I, I think the substance of what Rashad said except I would substitute a word let's say that not he said I think something to the effect of neither side has all the answers take answers outside how about leverage right so this is where this is what I was gonna ask Gibbs and I'd like Lauren to respond to this as well. She wants to, which is, Gibbs, you said earlier, as much as you hate this bill, you said, and I quote, something is better than nothing to explain why the no. Border Patrol Union, well, no, you did say, you may, I if you want to recant that. it, that's I'll, fine. I'll explain that statement. Yeah. yeah. Well, hang, well, so, uh, okay, well, let, let's imagine a timeline then where at least some gen conservatives genuinely believe that this bipartisan Senate border bill would have done something positive for the border. Here's the point, to Rashad's point. Set answers aside, it's about leverage. Republicans barely control one chamber of one branch. So to me, wh where I have a hard time squaring it, I agree that bipartisanship is value neutral. But to Rashad's point, if you want to make at least some progress that gives you some things as a conservative, not all, clearly not all, then why not pass it and then make room for additional legislation, better legislation, if you sweep the elections and get what you want rather than kick the can down the road. Because right now what we have is a contradiction. What we hear this is, is 
There is a crisis right now that needs to be addressed right now. But if I can't get everything I want, then I'm not doing anything. Yep. You, yeah. So, so that, first, that's yeah, I, I hate that. to interrupt. I hate to interrupt. Right. Uh, we are coming in at the. We're going to start winding down here. I know this has got a lot of energy here. A lot of people want to have their say, but we are winding going. down. Huh? You want to keep going? If okay. everyone's cool with keep going, we can. I'm keep fine. Going. Yeah. I mean, and if you want to bring other yeah. people in, with sure. Too, I just want to. I just want to make sure because I did say six to eight, and I want to respect everyone's time. So I'm just sure. letting people know. That is the thing. I'm not I'm committing to anything. I'll just I'll keep going as long as I'm the conversation. I'm going to keep going. Fun. We will have a break to yeah. read more super chats. Obviously, anybody but, uh, who leaves is a coward. But go ahead. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so fuck you. When, when it comes to the border bill, yeah, yeah, yeah. Take it the mic with you, Rob. I, take it with you. Yeah, we we want to we want to hear we want to hear the piss. No, I'm sitting. Listen, I, I, <laughs> th- yeah, th- sorry. All right. Anyway, so. When it, when it comes to the border union, I think that, that the border union is obviously – they want to increase their funding so they can do more things. That's what the border union wants. So if you're the border union president or the border union leader, of course you're going to say something is better than nothing. Now, now I'm not saying that in this case. I'm saying that's what he said. Can we to focus clar- on that for just a clar- second, Gibbs? Clarify we- what I'm stating, right? Yeah, I'm we can sh- focus. But here's my thing. Here's my thing with that, right? I, I've sat here and I have dived deep into this. And when I say the whole thing was a poison bill, I'm legitimately coming at this as a Republican who's not a diehard Trumper. Like, I know I'm coming across that tonight. I've, like, argued against Trump on many issues before, right? And I've sat here and I've looked at this. This is an issue that Republicans, that if you're an actual Republican and conservative that's dealing with the border, there are things in this bill, in addition to, like, other smaller portions, that are unacceptable to you at like every level right okay so but like, wait a minute hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, hold on so when I, whatever whatever y'all say oh this is a bipartisanship thing to get something started no that is not what this is this is a bipartisanship so that certain people in Congress, mostly rhinos, and I'm going to use the word rhino because these are not people that have Southern Republicans' best interests at heart. These people are actually going actively against this, and this is not a cult-like mentality because, like I said, I'm not a diehard Trumper. When I sit here and I see people support a bill that is so unstomachable that I just want to gag when I finish reading all 659 pages. Give us, that, can you give us the? Can you give us a few poison pills, like two? Give us all two right. poison pills. All right, let me pull it back up here, and I'll give you exactly one of them right here. So, uh, first of all, let's talk about uh, this one. It's um, it's six hundred nine pages. My bad, not fifty nine. So, first thing we got, we got the the, the amount of beds. You got you got to give us fifty thousand beds. Like literally, most months are averaging over a hundred thousand people. Right, that beds thing is not going to do anything. Right, we're talking about the judges and speeding this process up. That is an incentive for people that are living here. That know they know that is an incentive for more people to come. That's terrible. There's a 100,000 people on this border bill that are going to get alternatives to uh, uh, deportation programs and are going to be allowed to stay or just for whatever reason, be, you know, et cetera, et cetera. We can go into the, all the n- nitty gritty of that. Can they make but it more difficult programs. to apply for asylum? No. It does. It no, raises it the standards. Yeah. That's a yeah. lot. It, it doesn't. It doesn't. And then I, not only that, not only uh, the, uh, the other issue, and this is the biggest one, right, is that I can sit here and look and people go, oh, look, it was bipartisan. It's bipartisan. It's great. And I can point to 61 different times where the Biden administration has actually sat here and made the border weaker, like through different acts. And then they turn around and want us to eat shit and eat this bill and then say, oh, it's a bipartisan effort. No, absolutely okay. not. It, Before we get to responses to that, and we will, I do need to read the super chats. And again, just for everyone's knowledge, I am sponsored by or I'm not sponsored that's not the right word but I, I get a check from Progressive Victory just so full disclosure everyone knows I think uh, uh, Josiah and I think Hutch also work uh, to, to various degrees I'm not sure the exact nature of their um, involvement but they are so just full See. disclosures all, all around um, let's get to the super chats and then we'll get to some responses and gang I will be reading this because apparently my panelists have rebelled I've tried to shut this down but they won't let me and so we're going to keep going as long as they want to keep going so this is how we're going to do it okay here we go uh, ba, 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 ba. here we are uh, $5 from Origin of Logos to say Trump is the perfect embodiment of the Republican Party. More money-hungry, war-obsessed, and vacuous. Thank you for the $5. $10 from Mad Honeybee to say, Wick, what kind of liberal are you to let the woman keep getting interrupted during National Women's Month? Ha ha, JK. Keep up the hard work, buddy. Thank you for the $10. Um, Yeah, and if you guys want to keep uh, giving me super chats, I'll keep reading them. But that's where we're at. You can respond. I- 
to gifts, okay. then we'll go. Give Lauren a chance. I, just, to I remember. To. Yeah, I, 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 I do want to hear oh, Lauren's yeah, yeah, yeah. response as well. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, I could go through all the specifics. There's like, I have issues with almost everything in the bill, like specifics wise. I know that we have a limited amount of time on these kind of things, so I like it's hard to go through and sit here and point each. Thirty, point sec- point like, 30 seconds. I'll give you the take. The border patrol supported it because they get more money, and they thought that it would be bad, but better than the status quo. What they don't look at is that it gives unprecedented authority to my Orcus and the people he hires to determine whether or not to enforce these provisions. And so there are all sorts of exemptions. They would be able to say, well, these people are special cases, so they get asylum. They'd be able to say, we could have so many days a year that we don't enforce this. And it enshrines this into law for multiple years, which would mean if Republicans and Trump wins in 2024, they wouldn't be able to change this laws. Now consider, compare that to HR2 that was passed by the House that closes all of these loopholes. Why would we trust the very people that told us they want the illegal immigrants to come, it's racist to not want them to come, and said that it wasn't a crisis for three years, that now all of a sudden in election year say, oh, 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 compromise with us and do this. The problem's not that it gives money and saying, well, you've refused this money. The problem is because the things that it enshrined in order to get that money sent there are far inferior to the status quo and would encourage more illegal immigration. I mean, when this stuff happens on like my side, I think it's just, I, I, I think it's really bad for our politics to make uh, perfect the enemy of good. And um, I, I seem to recall, I could be fucking crazy, but I seem to recall in 2016 and 2015, one of the big things that Donald Trump ran on was he was a deal maker. He was going to get stuff done. He was going to get the parties to work together. And what ended up happening? He was absolutely illegally shit on him. Absolutely and meet him in every way at negotiating deals. He presided oh. over the longest government shutdown in, in our nation's history. That dysfunction has now extended to this uh, uh, speakership debacle that's blown up like a couple times now at this point. And he's, yep. he's, he, and he's still, he's not even in power and he's still blowing up deals. So uh, contrast that with, you know, the, the current president who actually was able to successfully negotiate bipartisan stuff. And look, the gun bill didn't do everything that I wanted it to. The infrastructure bill didn't do everything that I wanted it to. The, the ARP initially and build back better. I mean, I'm a big, like, big government welfare state kind of guy. And so like, I wanted to see like $15 an hour minimum wage. I wanted to see like uh, more subsidies, these kinds of things. Yeah, uh, My chat is uh, distracting me with something right now, but- um, The last uh, thing I was just gonna I'll say- I'll jump in real quick then. That's no, hilarious. So what you do is you but, blame- but, well, Go ahead, Rashad. Like, you're right, you run it. Good. We, we do want to go to Lauren, because again, we got it. Oh, right. she's, she's had the least amount of speaking time. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Bill is passed by Congress that grants any group or any um, agency or the president or any or the secretary of uh, foreign affairs or anyone particular power. And that power is not specified very specifically. Then that power, we assume we give deference to whoever is in charge of that power to make their own decisions with that. So this bill, as Rob stated, would give whoever is in charge of the border unprecedented power and they would be able to manipulate it in ways that uh, ongoing in the future that we wouldn't be able to control without putting in a new bill or um, getting rid of that bill, striking that bill. So, and then I, I just want you to address that because when that was pitched to you, you then switched to 2015, 2016 about Trump promising to um, try to be bipartisan and try to push more things, even though, as stated earlier, there's a target that may be true, but it you completely negated to address the point at hand was mm-hmm. what this bill, what a disaster this bill was. Instead of you're saying that we should just agree to it for bipartisanship's sake, as opposed to appointing to <laughs> as opposed to addressing the issues at hand with this bill. This, it, you know, and, there's, this and there's and there's other and there's plenty of other issues with this bill, including mm-hmm. incentivizing people to come here, as stated by Admiral Gibbs, with the yeah. extra beds. And, and just because there's money going there, that doesn't make if we're getting rid of walls and then making it more comfortable for people to stay. How is this a beneficial thing for, for people, people that are? That should we make it uncomfortable for people that are like applying for asylum? Do you mean like, yeah, like we should make it uncomfortable for people who are illegally? <laughs> our uh-huh. laws in fact so, that's what, what jail think, is what did you jail think for example what did you think for example when katie Britt referenced that one woman who was sex trafficked when she was 12 and all these kinds of like so like do you think I, that i'll speak like i would love i would love to hold on let, let, let hutch fit. hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on let hutch actually finish what he's asking and then i promise both of you a chance to address that go ahead 
So if you agree that that you know it's bad to have people being sex trafficked, like and all that stuff, do you agree that these people should be given asylum? No. I, agree I can answer that if you like. Bad to be sex trafficked, not. and I agree that we should make it very, very, Bro. very, very difficult to come in, so that people are not incentivized. Because did you know, on the way up here, not even once you're at the U.S. border, but on the way to the U.S. border, one out of th Four to one out of three women are great or put into the sex trafficking ring by their coyotes and usually charged. It's really a horrific thing, I especially the children. So if you want to mitigate that, then you would have less people incentivized to come to the border. And when we had Biden come in, Biden as president and with Mayorkas, we have had people wearing t-shirts saying, thank you, Biden. And when we've had people come up to uh, journalists at the border, their reason for coming here is because it's now easier to come here than ever and easier to stay specifically under biden mm -hmm. i just i just i your concern about like sex trafficking victims rings co like quite disingenuous if you're if you're gonna sit how around dare and you? How, how dare you excuse me i asked you if we should give these people asylum you said no absolutely not there, there's right. an extent to your say that. I'll address say this that. You. sorry sorry not... okay I if you didn't say that then i apologize i thought you did or i'll, I'll, I'll center it on rob then well no the, hold on hold on before rob goes i just want to i just want to ask lauren directly right uh so do you support asylum for these women or uh, lauren specifically I support asylum for for people who deserve asylum. Um, do you think they do? If you are sex trafficked, and that is part of the laws of I I believe being a, a part of sex trafficking is a membership for asylum. I'm not sure. I'm not sure no, what the, the laws question are for is. Asylum. Do you use, do you well, like regardless of what the hold on church. stop 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 please because I, I really I'm trying to understand her answer. Um, you personally laws aside, do you personally? support asylum for victims of sex the 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 these types of sex trafficking and things like that do you well before you ask no, 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 i'm asking lauren hold on hold on i'll shred their disingenuous bullshit because they got a fair question i don't know i just want to know the answer i'll shred them we'll wait till i get to speak and then i'll shred this there's, there, there's specific legal definitions that are required, and I don't know if any, if there's any like sex trafficking victim that allows you United States citizenship. Simply, I, I feel very unfortunate for sexually trafficked victims. Um, I, I don't know if there is anything under Why the U.S. provisions that allows. Why are you waffling on this question? question? No, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is, Stop this, this disingenuous. Hold on, let her finish her answer. God damn it, all of you. You're not answering the question. I would like question. to look more into it. It's a disingenuous question. I, I would like to look more into she it. She says, I don't I know. Also, I so I don't know is a fine answer for I would, I would I answer that. I want to answer that, and it'll be real fast. It's real <laughs> simple. That's wait. wild wait. to me. She did not answer that question. I will answer. I'll okay. tell you why, because it's a disingenuous question, because she answered it earlier, which is the fact that they wouldn't be getting sex trafficked, and they wouldn't even need this asylum if we had actual laws and were enforcing the border. So the only reason right. they're getting sex trafficked is because what about of Katie the Brits laws Brits that I'm not enforcing. What about Katie? Yep. What about Katie? What about the, the story from, what about here's, the victim from Katie, what about the victim from one, Katie Britt's story that wasn't trafficked that was not trafficked in the united states but was trafficked in mexico let's say this individual was trafficked say, in mexico and they run okay. to the united states border uh -huh. somehow get there we know they've been trafficked we know yep. they've been sexually assaulted Wait, do you guys that. in any way shape or form that. want to give them asylum because i let took people that. saying that if, we okay if offering asylum to people who are sex trafficked actually encourages the number of people who attempt to come here and therefore the number of people who end up becoming sex trafficked trafficked then unfortunately i would have to not support the law because i would want less people sex trafficked oh, okay do we so do, so are you for asylum for any people that are economically downtrodden violent sexual are you for are you for asylum for any of those people war because uh, by your logic anything asylum, negative that happens to the because by your logic because a bunch of people who aren't suffering would take advantage of it, we should not give asylum to those who are actually suffering. Is that what you're saying right now? Poverty, would you advocate for a policy that led to more sexual assault victims, yes or no? 
Do you advocate for policy? If we can oh prove that God. a policy led, no, 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 no. Okay. I understand you, that you're very manipulative with this. You're very manipulative, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna jump over you. Like you're doing that. Go ahead. What's going on? I'm not manipulative. The policy of eating babies, Rob. Go. No, I'm you, the question you, I'm asking you is quite you literally. Of, 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 I'm happy babies. Babies. What you guys are doing. Oh, you you don't have a heart for sexual assault victims? Here's what happens. You all support policies that lead to more people attempting to get asylum. You know that when more people attempt to get asylum, they'll be sexually assaulted. Max, you, you can use the shit. same Let argument finish. for Ukraine. I sat yeah, there quietly. I sat there quietly for you guys. I was very patient. I was frustrated, as you can tell, but that's patient, right? So... That's what you do. You know these policies will lead to more sexual assaults. Yes. You don't give a shit. You say, well, yes. they should. But look at the poor situation they're in now. Because we incentivize them to come, now they've been sexually assaulted. So now we have to leave them in. Yes. It's the same type of shit that it would be like, we should bomb Syria. And I'm like, no, that's terrible. We shouldn't bomb Syria. And then we bomb Syria and you go, oh, look, there's refugees. Now we have to take the refugees in. Yes. Isn't it convenient that the leftists that want all of these people to come anyways have the disastrous policies that allow them to come which then predictably they're harmed and then say oh Back. because they're harmed now we have you, to leave you, them you can use this you this can is use the same argument, argument for ukraine assault. this is the same this you is the same know. argument for russia and ukraine this is the no, same not. argument for russia and ukraine yes, it is. this is the same argument i can it's sit not. there and say don't you realize that by not stopping russia right here and now you're incentivizing russia to attack ukraine again when they finally rearm and resupply and refuel they're going to come back again i can use we can use we can extend this argument my point here is this the that's woman in Katie Britt's story, the me. woman in Katie Britt's story was not even raped, raped when she was coming across the border. She was raped in Mexico, right? Because someone who's suffering some any sort of thing, any sort of ups, financial upheaval, war, violence, rape, whatever, oh, yes. because it might incentivize more people to come illegally, we should not grant those people asylum. So do we just not fuck with asylum? I'm asking this honestly. I'm not trying to gotcha you. Are question. you guys not fuck with asylum, yes or no? I'll answer, but we'll leave Lauren go. Hold on, I have a, qu a quick follow-up question. Do you think anyone who suffers from a crime in a foreign country should be able to come into the United That's States? That's not what we're saying. I think, they should, I think they should be allowed. I think they should be allowed to apply for asylum, not hop over the border. But if they want to come for if they want to come well, to the border and say, hey, look, I'm here for asylum. Let me answer question, Let me answer his question, please. Okay. No, she I'll answers the question. question. She asks us a question like okay. a victim You're of right. any I crime. Want... You're right. I wouldn't want me to talk either. Go ahead. Rob, go, go <laughs> ahead. Well, I, I promise we'll all get to talk. Right? Hutch, go ahead. You're 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 asking us if like a victim of any crime should be granted asylum. That's not what the asylum laws are That's about. They, they, they specify no, no, I never advocated that for that. No, absolutely not. We have it's asylum laws though. that get what did I advocate for? When? Just wow. I mean the whole thing you'll just now was sitting here saying, Oh poo poo, someone's been sexually trafficked, oh no, yada yada. Oh, right. oh, it's the so same to clarify, as I didn't say that. So to clarify, yeah. I did not say you're that. Right. Did, okay. No, we didn't. But okay. So That's like, absolutely what you did. You're, you're, you guys are just making the case against asylum in general. Like you're, you're, you're basically Purpose making the case that we should laws. never grant asylum any, anytime, okay. anywhere, because then people are going to want to come Purpose. here and do the thing. Blah, 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 you know, like, yes. Okay. So Purpose of asylum laws is for people who are seeking, uh, who are, so, who have suffered from persecution or fear that they will suffer persecution due to race, religion, nationality, member of a particular social group or political opinion, mm -hmm. not because they've been raped. And I, I have extreme people empathy for people who have been raped. sexual violence under the current laws, you can come here fl and, and that can be an asylum. Right. Right. If, you would, if you would give me 15 seconds to answer this. Right. Okay. Okay. okay, okay, we're gonna not toss it to all. You we're don't gonna... know shit about asylum. Okay, we are going to toss it to Rob, where he's going to have an aneurysm. So we're going to toss it to Rob. We're going to let him go. We're going to let um people respond to Rob. And then we're going to see where we're at. I, I think Josiah does have to switch out um soon. And so... About 20 gonna... minutes. We do have a replacement for him, but yeah. Okay, I can answer this question quickly. We'll take Hutch. Hutch, let's say you go on vacation in Germany and you're sexually assaulted. Do you get to claim asylum in France? What are these fucking hypotheticals, Rob? What 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 are you talking about? What is you're incapable to talk about right now? If you're incapable, like what do you mean? Right, the back. Where would you go? 
I would go back to the United States, but the United oh. States, the circumstances here in the United States are not going to be the same as in like Guatemala or El Salvador that's or Nicaragua or something like that. That's the point, you morons, right? The point is this. If they had a legitimate reason for an asylum claim at their back home country, then they mm -hmm. have a legitimate asylum claim. If they didn't, claims to please you? let me finish. If they uh -huh. didn't and then they get raped in Mexico trying to get to the United States, no, they don't get asylum to get into the United States okay. then because they would go back to their country of origin okay, okay can, let me just ask you guys do you guys believe in asylum at all just at all well now that's now that we've de deflected to a different question i will answer that as well believe right i do not believe that my people on my side can say what they want i think unfortunately we should deny all asylum claims because people okay. on your side there because people on your side have exploited the system grotesquely which is leading to increased sexual assaults increased human trafficking and you don't give a shit for example we used to hear how from joe biden himself and kamala harris it was a human rights abuse when we had kids in cages under trump then under biden we had four times more kids in cages no longer did they give a shit you know what they said well, go ahead. I'll, I'll leave you. Why was it different? Why was the kids in cages different? Go ahead. Anyone can answer on the left. Go for it. There was a lot of uh, there was a lot of misunderstanding going on at the time and double standards that were being applied to the Trump administration. You're right about that. There were like there was a famous image going around of a detention facility and a picture was taken in like 2014 and people trying to pass it around like it was happening under Trump. The big the big arguments that I saw from my side when it came to Trump's uh, immigration policy was the family separation thing. That was the thing that like turned the most heads. Actually like literally kidnapping kids and separating from their families. That's not what like, happened. That's that's not oh, what of course happened. That's not what happened. Of course, it's what happened. That's not what happened. Was, that, is, that is a lie. That is a lie. What happened was, is kids were coming with people, and we were finding out they weren't their parents, and they were no. getting sex yeah. trafficking. That no. was exactly what you yeah. clearly don't know, and you're no. clearly just talking liberal talk. I understand. This we live in a totally real different issue. universe. We live in a totally different yeah, universe. Yeah, I, I live. Life. I live I by the border. I live by the border. My family works with the and people. That gives you expertise. Yes, you living in close proximity that makes you a fucking expert on. It, it actually does when I'm living by the border and we have people in my family dealing with this issue on a regular basis, working at these okay. centers, trying to actually help these That's people. And you're going to sit here and go, oh, no, that didn't happen. What really was happening, what we were finding so, out in droves. Well, as, someone who lives actually, next okay. to a, as someone who I, lives I, next I, to a fire station, right? I'm going to try to put yeah, this fire out, yeah, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm very expert on this. I and we do got to so. do gotta go oh, one at a time. That is a false equivalency. Like, I have family that is working at these centers trying to help immigrate them. That does not make I've, you an expert. I've, empl I've employed hey, immigrants my does entire not make career. You an expert by it just, osmosis, it okay? absolutely does. I've employed I, immigrants my whole career. I have, like, like my, I, this is like, this is like, this is you trying to, like, like ignore facts and try to, like, make me, like, seem less credible when I actually do know the issue. And when I'm sitting here and I'm seeing people reporting that, oh, these children are not with their parents and they are being sex trafficked and we're separating them for a short period of time to find find out if they are their parents hey. that is a good thing they yes. still haven't reunited hundreds of these kids with their parents but they didn't get kidnapped right okay yeah go may ahead I, yeah. May, okay that you gibbs is right and i think i can explain it to you how did the law mm -hmm. come about that required detaining children do you know which which law can you be more specific about what you're talking yes. about right now when huh? under obama they started detaining children on their own why did that happen are we talking about <laughs> unaccompanied minors right now no, when when Obama was in office, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, the most liberal circuit, ruled mm -hmm. that you could no longer detain children at the border with adults because of what Gibbs is talking about. Because you're putting people in cages and the court argued that you don't know if that's their parents. So to put them in what's tantamount to a jail cell next to adults could lead to sexual abuse. And, and so then. the Ninth Circuit Court said... You can't mm -hmm. detain. Now, what Obama, what the left wanted was, oh, well, then if an adult comes with a child, we have to let them both through. But what Obama set the precedent and did was, no, we're going to detain the adult and we're going to detain the child. And mm -hmm. that's how kids in cages started. 
And so that's how he's family back? separation under Obama. He, no, 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 yes, no, no. This is not the same thing. This is that not, is exactly what happened. happened. J J Trump's former uh, Secretary of Defense, then Chief of Staff John Kelly, went on a went on a fucking talk show and just straight up said, "We're going to do family separation to disincentivize people from trying to come to the border." You guys are saying that this is actually just Obama's policy. I, 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 know, I, it's Obama's family policy. separation. You're saying Obama did the family, do family, family separation, separation policy? Then why did do, why did John Kelly say that they're introducing this new policy to dis disincentivize people from coming to the border? How do you explain that? See, why I would do you, love, why do you have a problem? I think that you're probably misquoting him. I don't know that he said it was a new policy. Maybe why they you, said they would step it up or something. Like, please, let me finish, Gibbs. I'll Maybe that's chat. what he I'll said. Put it in the chat. Let me find you it now. It in, right? But I'm telling you, this court ruling happened under Obama because lefties thought this would be a cool way to have open borders, and even Obama said no. The other problem with what you're saying is. It is grotesque to assume that, oh, the only problems with kids in cages were that they were separated from their father or their mother. But the act of detaining I, I, children I is, please, that, let me finish. That's yeah, what you okay. said the argument was. You said the argument from people on your side was the problem was the family separation. So tantamount, that this is what's being, yes. yes, so this is what those people are saying. So when hmm. Biden said having kids in cages in a human rights abuse, he didn't mean actually having kids in cages. You see the left do this a lot. We can't you, take his you, actual you words. Strong Man, so, so no, no, much like like hold on, hold on, hold on. We gotta let Hutch respond. We gotta let Hutch respond. Hutch, respond. I didn't even finish my just point. A few, just a few months into just a few months into Trump's president's presidency, then Secretary Kelly confirmed that the administration was considering a hardline approach to Literally. illegal immigration that would Literally. include separating children from their families if they cross the southern border. And, and why was that? Why this was, was that? Hold a on. Trump policy why, he told you why they did it he told you he said we're doing this to disincentivize them we want to send things. a message don't two, come and they things. did that by kidnapping kids two things two things i want to address on that what it did start under Obama because there was the Seth Trafnick incidents and there was a major thing that happened, right? So that was one of them. That was a big one. Now, I will say Trump and them did do that. However, there was a very good thing when uh, when the guy who was in charge, I can't remember, was like, under Congress was asked, why would you do this? And he said, if you get a DWI and break a law in the United States, do you get to stay with your children? No. If you are a parent and you do cross the border illegally, you have broken a law, you don't get to sit here and have family time with your children you have broken a law and you do these are two separate things that both put children in uh in separation from the from their parents allegedly but i have a question for you why would you not want to separate these children from potential abusers and at least ask some questions to make sure that they weren't getting diddled do you like kids getting diddled whoa, whoa, that, whoa, whoa, whoa. what are we doing um I, I was looking at this fact check someone was giving me what, what i huh Dude. So on that note, on on that note, I, I was trying to find a, a replacement. Quick question. I have a quick yeah. question that's essentially the same question to the lefties. What would you do to families who come to the border? You would have to, to certainly. You would have to like. I'm sure my. I don't want to speak for you guys. I've been speaking a lot. You go ahead. Sorry. I was just gonna say I think they need to be kept together, but I, I I'm gonna give my outro and then dip because it's uh, it's getting eight thirty. So does it uh, not bother you that one to three, sorry, one third to one fourth out of of the women who come here are essayed? So uh, potentially a large portion of those kids would be trapped with their abuser, their coyote, while they're in those cages. I'll let the man do his outro. He said he's got to do his no, outro. Well, you can answer that in your outro, your but outro. yeah, decide does have to go we have gone over time um yeah josiah so please you have the floor go ahead i just saw the hat okay i just, why he, I just wonder why he left uh yeah so listen <laughs> i um Damn. i appreciate the conversation it definitely went off into a gazillion different directions as i expected these these panels often do and i contributed to it but uh, i actually enjoyed it um i thought it was a relatively good faith conversation with lauren rob and gibbs um, and I appreciate the, the good faith that we were able to have. Uh, I do think the question of, you know, what Donald Trump's influence on the Republican Party and the country as a whole, I think that 
if there was any possible way to like strictly regulate that conversation, I think it's definitely worth pursuing. All the other stuff that we talked about, the border, you know, Trump's track record compared to Biden's, all that stuff matters too. Uh, but I think that there's a, a degree of separation in all of this. For me, uh, I kind of end where I began, which is that I think Donald Trump is ultimately going to prove to be corrosive to the Republican Party as a body and to the country as well. Uh, I think, you know, the evidence is plainly clear. He's a malignant narcissist. And so somebody like that wielding the amount of influence that he does. Um, I, I, it's incredibly dangerous. Um, and we're seeing that other Republicans, lifelong Republicans, uh, people who were more consistently Republican and consistently conservative, both with their rhetoric and their actions far longer than Donald Trump, because I don't think Donald Trump's a conservative, right? I think that he just he's looking for whichever body um, can uh, aggrandize him uh, the easiest. Um, we're seeing those Republicans, people like Ken Buck and, and Mitch McConnell being pushed out. Now, you might say for good reason, fair enough, but these, again, are lifelong conservatives and lifelong Republicans. I don't see a long-term future for the GOP. I think fundraising and elections are important because if the GOP is going to have any sort of future, they have to win elections. They okay. need fundraising to do it, and it's not going well for this party. As far as like the spiritual component, again, I think he's mutating the GOP into a cult of personality, and I don't think that there's an effective check against it because I think people who criticize Trump and try to keep him in check, they get bullied out of the party. They, they get, tar get targeted by him, and he's made it abundantly clear that in a second term, he has no interest in tolerating those dissidents, even less tolerance than he did the first time around. Awesome. That's incredibly dangerous. I'd love to hear you know, uh, somebody say how they're going to do that, how they're going to simultaneously benefit from Trump's presence while also curtailing him and his excesses and keeping him from com you know, just mutating the Republican Party into a complete cult of personality. Josiah, where can people That's find my you? opinion. You can find where? me at youtube.com slash at pondering politics. Appreciate the conversation, people, and uh, I'm sure I'll be talking with all of you again. And by the way, uh, Gibbs, The Rise of Skywalker is the best Star Wars sequel. Oh, just want to put that out you there. You motherfucker. You oh, no. dipping on well, that note, throwing a grenade, and then walking away. Okay. See yeah, you later, we'll Josiah. Thank you again for See coming you on. I really appreciate you. Bye-bye. He doesn't mean uh, Okay. Back to well, – while, while we have a moment, let me get through these super chats. $2 from Alex Kirsch Project. Any Collins Wick? Probably not tonight. Uh, $2 from Testicle Johnson. Happy International Women's Month. Uh, I am an ally. Thank you. $5 from Testicle Johnson. Show me in the Constitution where it says a dog can't play baseball. Thank you. $5 from Testicle Johnson. Do you support hate eating babies? Yes or no? Thank you. Uh, $5 from Skill Tree and Gaming. Balanced immigration based off on our needs uh, and what is good for the existing middle class is the best approach, in my opinion. Thank you for the $5. Okay. With that, back to the discussion. Um, did everyone answer Lauren's question? I am very curious. I actually, I also have to give an outro, guys. I'm leaving as oh, well. I have if, if, we, if we're just going to, yeah, we can actually, you know what? This is probably a good time. <laughs> we can just end it right here. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 would, I would love to stay in chat, but I, I have a previous obligation. I get, you. But... I get you. Admiral, give your outro. Where can people find you? I'm Admiral Gibbs. You can find me everywhere as Admiral Gibbs. Uh, I like to stream. We do politics, gaming, and a lot of shenanigans. Good stuff. Uh, thanks, Twix, for having me. This is always fun. Uh, remember, a vote for Democrat is a vote for evil. A vote for Republican is a vote for America. That's the secret. And uh, thanks for having me. No, thanks, gang. Go check him out. He's a great guy. Really appreciate you. Yeah, at this point, I think we're just going to do some outros. It's been a robust discussion, and we will have more. There's been a lot of stuff brought up tonight that I think deserves further uh, critique and further exploration. Um, one of the things that I would like to do at some point is have a conversation on moderation versus extremism and bipartisanship because a lot of the answers on bipartisanship I thought from both sides, so I thought were just dog shit. So I want to talk about that. Um, what do I got coming up? So tomorrow's Collins, and then Monday I'm going to have a show on the TikTok ban. Um, no opinion is uh, interested in joining us. Uh, we're also going to have Brianna Wu and Christina Warren, I think is her name, film girl from YouTube. Um, should be fun. And uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. But with that, I want to give the floor over to Hutch for his uh, closing statements, and we'll go through and we'll end with Rob. We'll have the last word. So go ahead, Hutch. Uh, you don't need that. Yeah, listen, listen, things, uh, we get a little animated from time to time, but I do appreciate my conservative counterparts coming on and having this discussion, and I'd be interested in having more discussions with you guys as the election year progresses. Uh, you can find me at Hutchinson on Twitter, at Hutch on uh, Twitch. I don't really do YouTube much. So thanks for having me on, Wick. Okay. And uh, it was uh, nice to meet you as well. Okay, thank you uh, yep. for being here. And gang, check him out. You know who he is. Go uh, go give him a follow. Lauren Delaguna, what you got? 
Oh, you, you got muted. No one can hear you. The goons got her. You know, Hillary oh, and, and damn. Okay. There you, go. you can find me on X, previously known as Twitter. You could find me on Instagram and on Twitch and on YouTube. That's my primary platform. And, um, yeah, my name is Lauren De Laguna, D E L A G U N A. And I really appreciate Wick for having me back. And I'd love to have any further conversations with anyone who wants in the future. No, thank you. Give her a follow, gang. She's great. Really appreciate you. Next up, Rashad Crenshaw, please. Oh, I mean, I'm thankful for this conversation. Uh, I'm glad to be on here with Rob. Rob, you gave amazing pushback and went hard on the um, Ukraine thing. And, uh, just, just glad to be able to come on here and have that that conversation with everybody. A lot of the domestic policy stuff I was very, very lost on, so I need to brush up on that. But overall, great conversation, and would love to have it again. Beautiful gang, give him a follow. He's one of my favorite up and comers, gang. Uh, if I may show a little favoritism, I really like Kershad. I like his style. I like his content. Go give him a follow. Uh, last but certainly not least, Rob Nor, please. Thanks. Uh, no, I appreciate the show as well. I'll give my overarching thoughts on the topic briefly. Um, yeah, I think there are two separate questions here. I will concede that because I think a lot of the establishment Republican Party doesn't want to concede to potential outsiders that they aren't happy and the old guard Republican, particularly the donor classes, aren't happy with Trump or even people that are more in line with populism like Ron DeSantis or Vivek. Uh, they don't like that. They want to go back to the old George Bush uniparty that's basically indifferent. In fact, particularly in foreign policy, I challenge people, do this little fun exercise. Don't look at the dates, but go back and look at an examples of foreign policies from 2006 to 2012 and see if you could guess when Bush ended and Tr Obama began. It's almost indecipherable. Their policies, it was basically just an extension of Bush's term. So I understand the Uniparty wants that. As far as driving the country in a better direction, it absolutely is. Most of the complaints that people had about Trump policy-wise, I think we handily win most of those in the context of this debate. And I think the country is just objectively better when Trump was there other than when Biden's there now. And I have good reasons to believe that both Trump and Biden are largely responsible for why those things are occurring that way. Um, you know, I think that saying that you're happy Ukraine got invaded is fucking horrible. It's a horrible policy to have, but whatever. Uh, but I do enjoy the debate. I know I could be fiery. I appreciate everyone dealing with that. I thought the moderation was fine. Enjoyed talking to everyone here. Would be happy to do so again. You find me at Rob Nor or Normal America with Rob Nor. I stream almost every weeknight on basically all platforms. YouTube, Twitch probably works best. Thanks for having me, Wick, and thank you, everyone. Oh, thanks again for coming. Remember, to tune in tomorrow, 6 p.m. Eastern. We're just going to do call-ins. It's going to be easy day for me after all this, right? Easy day for me. Uh, and then next week, we got some great com stuff coming up on Monday with the TikTok ban, and we got some other things coming up. Are you going to be streaming after this, Rob Nor? Uh, I'll stay on a little. I'm going on yeah. TimCast Friday, so I'm going to talk a little about going on TimCast Friday. We'll, so. Uh, so we're going to raid out on YouTube to Speak Easy, and then we're going to raid out on Twitch to Rob Nor, and that's how we're going to do it. Uh, gang, I will see you guys tomorrow. Wait, bye-bye, everyone. Th thanks, Wick. Thank bye. you, everyone. Bye, we'll bye, bye. I'm going to move over here, so... <sighs>